Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. That's like They're having awesome. a that's like having a, a, a sticker on your new pants well, or well, something. Well, we're live, by the way. That's all right. So barely alive. We are barely live because we have to start the show across the street medicating. This is the Sativa Cross podcast. And this is inspirational words from Garen Angel to start our show. I gotta give you a little something. So today it's you know how to get high on Maybe life nobody and here, stay there. We got you know, a pretty stay good elevated, viewing. stay happy. And one of the first things you got to do is give more than you take, but take for some for yourself. So what I like to do is about ninety percent of the time I like to really be grinding and getting after it and trying to accomplish my goals, and then ten percent of the time I really like to take it back for myself. And it's just it's me time. And me time might not be selfish. Like it might not just be me. Maybe it's um, you know I just I want a break, so I want to take the kids out and do something fun but at the end of the day you have to you have to give it all and then take some for yourself and one of the things that helps is when you follow your intuition so a good way to you know know that you're on the right track and and giving it all for the right reason follow your instincts right like in life it's 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 a series of decisions that determine your outcome so if you always follow your intuition um, your intuition is either going to improve or you're going to figure out a better way because you know you you have to. So um, you know one of the things that I do to fine tune my intuitions is I find out what my KPIs are. What are my key performance indicators? You know what is it that actually makes me work? Um, and, and so everyone's got their own thing. For me, it's you know I really like to help people, um, so I, I, I strive on that, and that's. My intuition is always towards helping people. And so whatever your key performance indicators are, you know, find them out, you know, define them, and then live by them. Um, be an honest person, you know, just go through life and just be an honest person. On this here, um, if you want to subscribe to the feed to get notification when any time I go live, there should be a button there on your page. So go ahead and hit that, and that way when, when I'm live, you'll, you'll go ahead and get a notification. Uh, you know... One thing is that I, I notice a, a lot of people start to say, oh, you know, I'm getting older, so things are harder. Life actually gets way better with age. Think about it. Like, I have two kids, so I, I come at it from this perspective. Uh, you know, I get to do so much more with them, and, and there's, so, there's so much more that they give me back now as they get older. And, and really, you know, you can get so much out of life by just living it and aging with grace. So, you know, have thick skin and a kind heart. You know, that's that's going to be one of the things that helps you live happily. And, and you know, one of the things that's going to help you do that, sell what you believe in. So whatever it is you're doing in life, make sure it's something that you believe in. And it goes back to just being an honest businessman. So, you know, I'm not saying everything always works and, you know, you're not ever going to have an unsatisfied customer or anything like that. Um, you know, that's where the half thick skin comes in. Because if you sell what you believe in and you have thick skin but a kind heart, you're always going to be okay. So, you know, run your work, your life, run everything you can, and don't make your decisions based on financials. Make decisions based on what's right here. So, you know, when you follow your heart, you follow your instincts, you know your key performance indicators, you start to continue to get ahead. And, and as I said, one step leads to the next, or one decision leads to the next opportunity. So when you start to integrate some of this goodness into your life, it, it just works. And uh, as you're eliminating goodness, don't only just, or, or as you're uh, focusing on goodness, you know, don't only focus on the goodness, but make sure that you eliminate the negativity. Don't allow negativity into your life. When somebody comes at you and they're really negative, just tell them, I don't allow negativity into my life. I just don't do it. Let's talk about the best thing in your day. Let's talk about other things. Keep the negativity out. Focus on what's important. Don't judge. You know, that's that's one thing that I think a lot of us wind up doing is, uh, you know, I, I hear all the time chatter about this person, that person, what they're up to. It's not our life. It's not our mortgage payment. It's not our kids. It's none of it. So everyone has their own set of morals and their own outlook on life. Let everybody live it. And, and just don't judge them. Love them. You know, I, I think that... There's so many unique people and everyone has their own unique trait that um, if you ever wind up where you feel like there's not a solution to a conflict, I'm going to tell you there always is. You know, I, I can't tell you how many times that I, I've had a conflict and I've solved it with something simple like, let me buy you a slice of pizza or, you know, 
can, can we meet for a beer to discuss it? And it just, it helps because at the end of the day, there are no overnight success stories. Everybody that I know that has ever made it in life has done it from a series of steps. They identified their key performance indicators, they knew what they were, and they made sure that they stayed on it, stayed true to it, sold stuff they believed. So uh, as you do that, just know that, you know, luck is earned. You know, people don't just, there's, there aren't lucky people. There are people that made a lot of great decisions, and, and they continue to, and, and that's how they've gotten there. So if, if you want to be successful, one of the biggest traits that you need to, to hone, the skill that I think really accentuates what, what it is, you have to be optimistic because you're going to fail a lot. You're going to fail a lot. And, and you know, it's going to feel terrible. And how am I going to make it? I don't have the money to do this. I don't have the money to do that. You know, what do I do next? I'll tell you what you do. Be optimistic and don't stop. You know, follow your instincts and you'll get there. So that's what I have for you on, on Wednesday. Join back on Friday. Hit the subscribe button. It'll let you know when I'm live. Keep giving me the feedback because that's what defines these messages I'm giving to you guys. You know, and, and together we win. That's what this is. You know, I'm just, uh, I've met and been around the most amazing and impactful people you, you could ever possibly meet. And, you know, I, I engage them in ways that I can download what it is for their recipe for success. And, and these are the tips that I've learned along my 30, 39 years of life of doing pretty amazing things. And I just, I want everyone to get better. You know, life is not a zero-sum game. And we have to get out of that mindset that, you know, there's, if this guy wins, I lose. That's not the way life is. Because, you know, life is about love, happiness, and money. Well, love is limitless. Happiness is limitless. And we have a fiat money supply. So it kind of just exists. There's no rhyme or reason or no limitation to it. So, you know, just because... You can go out and make a bunch of it. Doesn't mean you're taking it from someone else. It's not like that, and so we have to break that mindset. Okay, it's not, it's not this, it's this. So get where you need to be. I love you guys. You're amazing friends. You've done so much for me through the years, and without you, I'd be nothing. Thank you guys. Ah, uh, Sativacross.com coming to you live from Trenton, New Jersey, right outside. And by Sunday night, just pain and nausea, couldn't swallow anything, didn't sleep. Second night, I had waking dreams and pain. And Here's what pisses me off. I remember thinking, if I just had some tincture, because there's no way a smoke would go in and out. That would, that would, you know, I was hypersensitive, too, to taste, smell, everything. And... Um, I couldn't smoke. So I realized about 2 a.m. the second night I was going to get no sleep again, and I, I kind of felt like I was going delirious, you know. Damn. And not, and not in a good way. And uh, then I realized I had one brownie. And uh, I had my significant other get it. But I couldn't, if I chewed it, I would almost get sick. So I, I took a serious crumb size. A little bit of water got it down. And I did yeah, maybe more two more. And I laid back and I couldn't believe I actually felt a little better after doing that. And son of a bitch, if that is what it took to help me turn the corner, keep my freaking sanity during, you know, a, a blowout in my body of, of I don't know what, it pisses me off. The freaking plant. You broke the law to make uh, yourself I, feel I, better. I, I swallow I, to survive. It felt like it was. I mean, admittedly, I don't take the insect real well, but then I at least know with levels of uh, things going on where it stands. But um, just enough of a window and sitting in the shade a little bit. Uh, we started the show to say, well, we're going to take a break right now. Which is kind of cool, because, you know, then we don't need to take a break later. We've already took our break, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But that was to, um, uh, well, to break the law again. And I, I, I wasn't breaking the law. Other than that. I'm not allowed. I'm not, you're, you have to suffer. I don't, apparently, yeah. because of the law. Yeah. Well, today, today, that 
again made the difference where my thought process is a little better now. It's all, I, I, I went up to move my car up for you and I went back five minutes later, the engine was still, I can't have an intelligent conversation if I'm doing stuff like that. So breaking the law got me to uh, keep my thoughts a little more fluid. I don't, I don't understand that, yeah. to be perfectly honest. I don't consider you breaking the law. You're doing what you got to do. Yeah. I don't, I mean. Well, the, you know, there are two kinds of law. There's natural law and there's man-made law. You are absolutely correct. I did not break any natural laws. Nope. Those are like for people who would say, well, put it differently, uh, that's, there's God's law. When I say natural, God's, or whatever one might believe in that area. And then there's man-made law. And uh, yeah, it's absolutely right. This is, um, but it's also why we're here. So um, as impossible as I thought it was going to be uh, earlier this morning to be sitting here, well, I came just to deliver the uh, tent top and didn't set up the comes today. It's, I can't do it. Um, wow, there are no cones set up. Oh my God. Yeah. And, and you, you, you know, while I was bringing cones over, I had the tent top up. Three separate people on three occasions came and walked under the tent in that way. Like, they didn't walk around it. And I'm thinking, I'm going to set up cones over here. That's, you know, I wouldn't walk on I mean, it's not like I mind. Remember where we are. That's pretty lazy, though. Couldn't go around. We're in front of the state not house. Your, not your tent. Bunch of non-caring, rude people. It's, you know, right. Christie's people. So uh, this is our 50th podcast. Yeah. I am honored to be here for your 50th podcast. Yeah, you were at a lot of the early, earlier yeah, ones. a lot and, of that uh, year. You know, but a couple of things here. Um, I, uh, I appreciate the recognition in terms of the efforts put forth, although I would be remiss to, to um, not mention um, all the people who were fighting this fight long before Leo Bridgewater came on the scene. People like Ed Lefty Grimes, Jim Miller, Ken Wilkowski. Cheryl Miller. Cheryl Miller, yes. You know, um, it's, it's so much that our legislatures, our legislators are starting to come aboard or come around in terms of their way of thinking, but they are, um, they're, they're, they're slow in understanding the sacrifices being made, you know, um, that have been made. And so, um, of course, you know, there aren't very many, um, you know, veterans who are, you know, um, allowed to um, treat or, or medicate on this. And the thing is, is that, and I've been saying this since, you know, we've met, you know, there are, um, <clears throat> you know, we're 20, 22 of veteran suicides a day, uh, five a week in the state of New Jersey, you know, and what's current, the, the, the current or the traditional way of treating PTSD now is um, opioid. You know, lots of pills. Yeah, and you know, um, you know, go one block over. You know, this, 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 this uh, subject for me is I, I, I've really, really, really left it was uh, last year for when um, uh, the kids. I was real big on that. That that was really like I can't, I still to this day cannot watch the videos you make. And when that law passed, I was. Like so, and at, now then when it was the next fight was this, I didn't, I didn't know about the the the, the veterans mm -hmm. because I didn't think that that would be an issue. I mean, you assume like I did. Yeah, like because <laughs> these, the, I, when I see a when I see a soldier, I walk up, I shake his hand, I mm -hmm. tell him thank you, and I love mm -hmm. you. And there's a lot of people here that are, that are behind you. I, I was never behind the war, but I was always behind the soldiers. Mm -hmm. Because they're risking mm -hmm. their, their lives mm -hmm. just so we can sit here for the 50th time rocking this podcast. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they, mm -hmm. when they come home, they deserve Brad Pitt treatment. Mm -hmm. You know? They deserve the top of the line. Yeah, they don't get no that. No holds barred from anything like this. Yeah. And we're holding the... And 
politicians like Christie say and we're that they told support that. this. What? Say that they support the veterans. They support everyone coming back. No, they the don't. War. Did you hear but about the? Uh, did you hear about the mass grave they just found? The who? The mass grave they just found. No. A um, bunch of a bunch of uh, soldiers from Iraq from 2006. Yeah, 2006. What was the whole story, Cleo? It was it was horrible. There was like 200 bodies. American soldiers, but yeah, grab a mic. I, I want to. Yeah, this is crazy. I just heard about this today. Uh, you didn't hear about this yet? No. Yeah, uh, the Air Force apparently covered this up. It was worse than a mass grave. It was like 247 separate cases of, um, like, remains of veterans, like 247 naval men that were never identified. Their remains were just sent to a landfill. Yeah, landfill. Not, disgusting. not burned. Not like thrown in the ocean or I don't know what the proper way of getting rid of a body is, but literally sent to a landfill in Virginia, 247 naval, like... This is um, real? Yeah. Real. This just happened. Families yeah, are just, freaking out. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, 240, let me look up the post. They're, they're, call, they're calling some of these body parts medical waste. So like when they well, they said that it had been mixed with medical mi so, waste. Yeah, some of it, yeah. But still, what's, uh, where's the excuse? There's, that's not an excuse. For example, no what, like, if a soldier's body does not fit into the uniform, they'll cut off of the arm. Oh, they'll yeah, take that arm. That. that arm is considered medical waste, and it gets thrown yeah. into a landfill. Instead of getting put into the, the, mm -hmm. the casket. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's one. That's just one issue. There's a, a bunch of other body parts and and bodies that okay. were so this in a landfill. Th th this is um, the first as as a vet. Uh, this is the first I'm hearing of it. It's a and I am so hoping that you know that uh, I'm hoping true. that there's this oh is not God. true. I want an explanation. Imagine your husband or son, brother or your mother or sister or daughter served this country in uniform overseas in wartime, and God forbid, imagine they made the ultimate sacrifice and paid with their life. We've all been assured that if that happens, their remains are at least treated with great care and the utmost respect every step of the way. Sadly, we are now learning that just not true in all cases. A scandal is unraveling in Washington and elsewhere about how some of our service members' remains have been treated. And we start off tonight, um, oh, it's a whole video. Here, let me just send you the video. That's a lot easier. Yeah. I want to um, yeah, keep you know, going. I want to. Oh my goodness. Is there any more information on that story? Yeah, one second. What, where are these bodies the, buried? Uh, these they, are, it, they weren't buried. They were thrown in a landfill. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. That's a bad. Yeah. Dover Air Force Base is the first stop of the All Americas War Dead on their yep. final trip back home. But behind the dignified ceremony, there's a growing scandal over the fact that many partial remains of U.S. service members were unceremoniously dumped in this Virginia landfill. It's a far greater number than previously disclosed. Over four years, the Air Force dumped more than 2,700 cremated partial remains Whoa. in the landfill. Oh, I thought 2,700. I'm sorry, it wasn't 200. Oh. Yeah. 2000, Nearly 1,000 of those remains have been identified through DNA, belonging to 274 U.S. military killed okay. in okay. the wars. Got it. Okay, so out of the 2,700, yeah, 274 and were identified. 200 and some of them were, okay. Um, that doesn't make it any better. I mean, <laughs> that doesn't... Not at all. Um, um, but uh, The Air Force never informed service members' families of the practice. Um, Sergeant First Class Scott Smith was killed in Iraq in 2006. His widow, Gary Lynn, er, Jerry Lynn, was shocked to learn only recently that some of her husband's remains are still buried in the landfill. Absolutely mortified. Just, I was so angry and I felt betrayed by my, you know, these people down mm -hmm. at Dover. Air Force officials struggled today to explain how human remains could be cremated, then dumped right along with the medical waste. How you dispose of medical waste, they just don't get it. Um, it's such an obvious flagrant desecration that if they didn't know, they didn't no want to know it. Mm -hmm. It's not the only problem at Dover. Partial remains of some service members have been lost, and in one case, the mutilated arm was sawed off a deceased Marine so his uniform would fit for burial. All this follows the startling revelations that Army personnel at Arlington National Cemetery have buried some veterans in the wrong graves or lost their remains altogether. There are two ongoing investigations here at the Pentagon into Dover, and Air Force officials said today they will apologize to those 274 families involved in the landfill controversy, but only if they call 
Brian Williams, uh, or but only if they call for the apology. <laughs> they don't. It, they it don't. literally says. Uh, they have to. Air so Force I gotta officials call you said to today me. they will apologize to those 274 families involved in the landfill controversy. As long as they call. Only if they call. So I have to call you to get yeah, and for you to uh, apologize to me. Go make sure that your family member didn't die in that land. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Does uh, that surprise let me, you? Yeah, let, they let me, don't put that in a recruitment video. Yeah, let, let me let me say this. <laughs> let, let wow. me, not you might be dumped package. in the let, let me, <laughs> Yeah, let me say Just this. As, oh, as, FYI. Oh, as, God. As, let me say this. As someone who has taken the oath to protect and serve, to protect this country from both you know, from enemies both foreign and domestic, you know, um, and let me tell you, we don't turn that, that doesn't get turned off. You know, we're always, you know, us veterans are always, veterans. You know, we stay at the ready. Now, the men and women in the United States military make up less than 1% of the total U.S. population. But we do 100% of the fighting. We do, not you. Look at that number. A, yeah, we do. Yeah, we make up less than one percent of the total U.S. population. That's why I love you. But we do one hundred percent of the fighting, and you know when we we're told, you know while we're in, we're told how we have the 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 love and support of the American people. Now understand something, a United States citizen. You have the most powerful military in the history of the planet. And the reason why you have the most powerful military in the history of the planet is not because of the toys, such as the guns and the, the tanks and all that stuff. You have the most powerful military in the history of the planet because it's an all-volunteer military. We yeah, volunteer. That's powerful. Yeah. So that's, that, and that's what, now, here's the thing. Um, we're told while we're in how we have the support of the American people. What we, what we also assume we leave to you is to put the correct people in place, in, in, in positions that when, who will responsibly utilize the United States military, that force. No one prays for peace more than the American soldier, no one. Now, what, I, what my experience have, has been so far is that people see those, you, you, you've seen those shows where they have the, the families come out at the football games or the basketball games. To the return and of then, the soldier. And then the soldier, they surprise them and you know, the families run and everybody's hugging and it's, oh my God, that's such a, you know, folks like that. Folks like to see that. That is the most depressing the, stuff yeah. I have ever seen in my life. That it, is not it, like, it, it's, uh, But for, 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 uh, for us no. soldiers, like, you know, um, the, thing that, the thing that stands out for us is, you know, like I get, I'm, I'm, I get nervous when I start hearing, when I hear people, particularly like with Donald Trump and everything like that, talk about how we have to kill ISIS and we have to go here and we have to do this and we have to do that. Um, aren't okay, we, aren't we ISIS? Are yeah, we? Or Al Qaeda? Wait, wait, which one are we? Al Qaeda or ISIS? You know what? Which here's a here's we're of one both. of them. We're a one of them. We're both. both. Here's yeah, here's what much. bothers me with that, and what bothers me with we're that wrong. is, remember I just told you that we make up less than 1% of the population right. and we do 100% of the fighting. So that tells me that more than likely, I am going to, you're co-signing me to a fight. You're co-signing, you're co-signing me leaving my family. Mm -hmm. You're co-signing me to, you know, so please don't be so quick to sign up to go to war. You know what I'm saying? War, like, like that is not the, that without actual real conversation. And, I sw and that, that's what makes me nervous when I start hearing folks talk about, you know, we got to go kill ISIS, we got to go do that. Yeah, no, there is no we got to do that. I got to do that. You're not going to pick up that gun. Right. You're not going to get right. on that C-17. That's Nor not are your you. children. No, yeah, you, matter of fact, you and your kids are not going to do that. I am. My kids are the ones who have to, do, have to go for a year. You know, I remember when I was in the Army, I remember telling people, you know, I didn't want to be, I never wanted to get married as long as I was in the army. Never. Because that, because I hated the idea of having to tell my wife and my kids, 
you got to get used to me being gone for a year every other year. That's how it was back then. And we're talking like 2005, 2000. You know, you got to get used to me being gone for a year every other year. So you get a year home, you're gone. Yes. Yes. Yep. It's called a year stabilization. And then you and then your base runs on what they call a, um, a deployment rotation. So and then, and then it also depends on what your unit specialty is. And if there's a mission, if the mission requires you requires that sort of specialty, they can your, your unit can be ordered to go to deploy. So they, that's how it works. That's how they do it, you know. And a lot of times, you know, um, some, some of these units are so, um, they're needed so badly that, they, that their rotation, they're constantly, you know, they're moving. Makes sense. Yeah, and so that's how, that's how it works. But, and if you happen to PCS, which means change bases, go from one base to another, you may come, you may end up, uh, uh, hello, okay, you may end up, um, coming home, transferring to another base, and when you get to that base, that unit's deploying. That happens all the, that, hap that used to happen a lot. Oh, sorry about that. Um, and so, you know, it, it, it really, you know, it really makes me nervous when we start talking about, you know, sending our men and women in uniform over to foreign lands to fight. And, you, you know, know, one thing you said, you know, uh, you, uh, when they say you have, you have to love the American people, which is true. Mm -hmm. So y'all rely on us to put the right people in place to utilize y'all well. That is, that is the goal of every American. The problem is, we're not actually running it. Right. You're so. Di well, there's. We're told we are. Yeah, no, but we're not. Here, here's the thing. Not only that, but. I, what I've, what has been my experience being back here is that folks are somewhat disconnected as to the realities of how things are really going. And just like you, I've met so many people who assumed that, you know, PTSD is, 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 a, is, is actually on the list. You talk to regular people and they go, yeah, of course, uh, uh, veterans who suffer from PTSD should have access to medicinal marijuana, because nobody wants to see a, a soldier, you know, nobody wants to see anybody messed up on oxycodone, fentanyl. Fentanyl is what killed Prince. You know, um, you know, Percocets and all that stuff, that's a new thing. But when it comes to, you know, uh, PTSD, it's assumed that it's part of the list. And when I tell them, no, it's not a part of the list, that's when it's, what? What do you mean it's not a part of the list? So I've, and I've said this to you before, Lefty, I've, I'm learning that there is a line, there's a particular line, especially with folks in New Jersey, especially with folks in New Jersey, there's a line that they don't cross. You know what I'm saying? And veterans not having access to everything they need, especially when we're, as a country, we're at 22 veteran suicides a day, you know, more veterans have committed suicide than actually died in the war. And that was the same thing that happened in Vietnam. More people, uh, more Vietnam veterans committed suicide than actually died in the war. Because now here's the thing, that we're talking over 58,000. You know, so, and, and, and we, it wasn't that many veterans, it wasn't, we weren't not, we didn't lose 58,000 men, women, men and women in the OIF and OEF, or Operations Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom. We didn't lose 50, 58,000, but we had, but, so you understand? Still, yeah. Yeah, it's just a, a like, like it's the thinking, yeah, it's the, it's the total disconnect, it's the total, especially of the American people, not really understanding or, or the poor assumption. You know, I assume the same thing. I was just like you. I assume PTSD was a part of the state program and then come to find out it wasn't. And, then, and, and when you look deeper into why is PTSD not on there, you know, and, that, and, and when you look at, especially when you find out that states who have medicinal marijuana programs that do include PTSD and many other things, they have seen a significant decrease in doctors writing prescriptions for opioids, like fentanyl. Which is a problem. Yes. Which is a problem. Yes. In the 
Yes. Now, here's the thing. If you're seeing a decrease in opioid usage and, you know, and all that stuff, who's not happy about that? Uh, pharmaceutical boys. Exactly. Exactly. You know, pharmaceutical boys ain't getting paid. Exactly. Um, insurance companies ain't really making their bread. There you go. Which means the government ain't really making their bread, which means a lot of people aren't going to Maui for uh, the summer. Go. Well, it, well it, you know, let's, let's just look at what the effect is. Like when you look at the, the, the riots in Baltimore recently and when they destroyed things, what did they destroy? What did they really, what was the first thing they went after, the, the crowd? What did, they, what did they go after? They went after that CVS store, the pharmacy. And what ended up, what was flooded on the streets of Baltimore was all those pills. Folks went in there, that's what they grabbed. They grabbed those pills. So that's an that's a gr even greater indicator of just how bad things really are. This opioid issue we have here in the United States, period, is, 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 is like the crack epidemic. That's, that's where we are right now. Yeah. And folks are, are somehow wanna, disconnected to, or not making that connection. I want to say this. You know, one of the, the, the reason why I was so ignorant to uh, PTSD not being on, the, on, the, on the, the list is because, you know, it, I don't, I, I, I'm not really a religious guy, mm -hmm. but I can tell you that I know for a fact that we were created by something. Mm -hmm. And that whatever created us did not have things like war and all that thing in mind for us. Mm -hmm. We were not meant to go through those things. PTSD itself shows you that we're not meant to go through those things. We're not meant to see those things. Mm -hmm. We're not meant to do those things. You know what I mean? So th the way that that affects the... I always figured for, for the people that were given up everything mm -hmm. for us, they would be definitely taken care of because like that, why would you, why would you use somebody like uh, again, that? Again, it's the assumption. You know, it is the, like, if I sent you to war, it's my job to take care of yes, you. Yes, yes. That's the I, assumption. I'm fighting yes. for you. Yes, yes, So, yes. I mean, you gotta take care of me. You gotta yeah. feed me. I've had people, I've had, I've had yeah. people who, had, who walk up to me and say, thank you for your service. And, and, I, and then I understand something. When, you know, there's things called customs and courtesies, and I've spoken to this before. You know, the, the, the actual custom or courtesy when, when it's five words, I thank you for your words. That's the you say, whatever it is that you have to say. And I'm very proud of, you know, I'm, 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 I'm all, I'm pro, I'm pro America. When you look at, again, um, there's the assumptions, the assumptions that, you know, I get, I'm getting everything that I'm supposed to, I should have in order to be better. I broke you, I fix you. Uh-uh, there's a, there's a, I call it oxymoronic politics because now we know just how deep lobbyists have gotten in terms of when it comes to our government that, you know, there are people who, there are things, and there are things that are much more important you know, you know what the, you know, officially they say, you know what the official language of the United States is? English, right? Yes. Do you know what the unofficial language of the United States is? Spanish. No. Indian. No. American, Native American. Indian. No. What's that? Money. <laughs> That's a trick question. <laughs> Damn. But right. it's the truth. Money. But you know what, this makes me, because I was just, as you were talking, I was just thinking about this and, you know, the, the, the veterans with, with PTSD, the wounded veterans, you know, I think about them, but what I just thought about was that soldier that, that bled out on the field. Mm -hmm. His, it, like a true, he, he's a soldier, he's a warrior, a mm -hmm. Roman gladiator that man is, right? Yeah, we have a warrior's creed. So yep. that, so as that man is dying, that man is not thinking, you know, I shouldn't have done this. Da, da, da. He's a warrior. So what he's thinking is, you know, I, this, I gave this up for a reason, you know. So that, that dying soldier, the government is betraying him. That one that's dying because he's, 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 not, he's dying for his belief in something, but that's, that belief is not being upheld home. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's being trampled on, betrayed. It's, it's, it's that... Uh, 
Well, that I, is the worst part I, about I, it. I, uh, what do you say? You can ju- you can judge a, a, a country by the way they treat it. They're, they're young and they're old and they're veterans. You know, I, that, I mean, seriously. You know, I mean, if you look at it in Israel, you know, um, uh, uh, Israeli uh, soldiers are allowed to get uh, <laughs> Israeli soldiers are allowed to have uh, uh, are allowed to uh, have um, uh, Tempest. You know, Israeli soldiers are allowed to have cannabis on the battlefield. Huh. I knew you were talking about cannabis. I'm back. This is this whole discussion has been about. This is this is Tempest. She's in come around. She's in my my my, my uh, speech class. We're in college together. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. 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 Cooking yeah. for no reason. Tempest, come man. over here, sweetheart. Mm. We're here anyway, though. But that is like that's 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 a shame, yo. Because, and 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 the crazy thing is, most of those soldiers, they're, I'm 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 33. They're younger than I am. They're babies, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Tempest, um, we're in. We we have we have communica- speech communications class, and would you would you would you like to share what what you've learned by having me in your class, based on my speeches? Oh my, should, should be interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Why not want to know? <laughs> my name is Tempest, and hi, Tempest. Um, I'm a freshman. I'm taking summer courses, mm-hmm. and as I've been in. Our speech class so far he's been amazing first as soon as we walked inside the classroom he was the bold one the outspoken one to my just is a speech class so we're trying to learn how to build up confidence trying to learn how to you know be outspoken and as soon as he opened up his mouth right off the back he had knowledge he had wisdom i i i see i can see that wisdom i can see him coming in just straight strong not even but here's he the thing. He don't hold back I'll, at all, and, I, and to me, that is amazing. I'm amazing. not the and, and and here's the thing, she's going to be a judge. Nice. I, I'm yeah. calling it into existence now. This one here is sharp. You know, this is Tempest is one of those ones. I love her name, Tempest. Um, but she's definitely one of those uh, one of those young ladies. You know how you just meet people, and you just know they going that one going to be all right. Mm-hmm. That's that's one you ain't got to worry Thank about. You. That's her. This is one you don't have to worry about. You know, you can't say that about everybody. No. Definitely, and can. that doesn't come lightly. <laughs> definitely, but, but Tempest is definitely one of those one of those people that you know. Um, I don't know, you know, like she's going to be impactful, you know, and and she's good. She's very good. Yeah. You know? Tempest, Thank what are you, you. what are your feelings on medical cannabis since you're here? Yeah. Well, he did. A, he actually did. What I can't. He's laughing. We're laughing because we know what happened in class. Yesterday. yesterday and we had a um a ignorant young lady and Uh-oh. meaning mm-hmm. ignorant she was just you know she didn't know and she had a hard time you know you could tell it was a lack of not knowing but instead of her trying to open up her mind and be you know more uh, mindful yeah. and to yeah, she want to learn more mm-hmm. so you know you can give the feedback and so she just wasn't she was standing her ground which was you know Admirable. good mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's normal but it's like you have to be willing to want to know more and by him explaining it and giving details, I think it's a good idea. Look, for me, I have a grandma. She has um, cataracts, whatever, in her eye. Mm-hmm. So she's like, she needs medicinal. So it's like yeah. some people, I'm willing to learn more because I heard it that you have a mind, a body, you know, mm-hmm. and it was really, it was really helpful. So yeah, Tim, uh, it helps a lot. It, it, yeah. it, and and, and, and I was great? willing to learn more, but mm-hmm. since our class is so short, we are we're not in that class where we can actually elaborate on much. We try to, but it's more of where Stone is that got off of Jeff's couch. Hmm. <laughs> Whose couch? You don't remember that old commercial back in the day to say if you smoke weed, you'll never get off Jeff's couch. That's oh, not true. Yeah. Yeah. You don't remember that? Yeah, Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah. 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 Where Stone is that got off of Jeff's couch? Yeah. yeah. There's 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 uh there's actually we're not on a couch. We what we do in like what <laughs> we do in our awful. class is we do a lot of. There's a lot of exchange, and uh, what I've been able to do is, you know, educate a lot of my classmates yeah. on um, on on the things that all things, you know, medicinal marijuana, PTSD, um, hear how things affect the the city of Trent, mm-hmm. you know, and they for the most part they've been really receptive in terms of, you know, I never really thought about it that way, 
Mm-hmm. You know, and also them, especially our professor. Yeah, he's he's really a yeah he's a go getter. Yeah, and he's also one that you know um, full of a lot of questions and wants to know. You know, and and so you know there are times where the the student becomes the teacher a yeah. lot. You know, lot. and we had one of those moments mm-hmm. yesterday in mm-hmm. in class, and 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 Tempest did say to me, you know, she said, Leo, I, I you know, you, you're right, and I she saw the difference between the fight with mm-hmm. me and our other mm-hmm. classmate who just was so resolute in her way of thinking, mm-hmm. didn't even understand. She was using old words, <coughs> gateway drug and all that stuff. And what, that was, what were her points? What was she, she trying she's to say? She's going to Chiba. She's a, she's a, she's a, a LPN. All right. Uh, yeah. She's like some kind of a yeah, nurse. Yeah, she's yeah, a nurse. She's a nurse, yeah. And she so should, she, she should come on the podcast. Wow. That, that would be a lot of fun. She should know yeah. better. She, yeah, so that's she what I said. Wow. Like, and and that's what we were thinking, like, yeah. since you are in the medical field, yeah, yeah. and this is, like, medicinal and stuff like that, you should be wanting to learn more. But she was just so stuck in okay, the, the, that the, mindset. She wasn't yeah. trying to... Yeah. Pick pharma. When somebody who's a nurse has an opinion like that, simply ask, could you tell me what the endocannabinoid system is, please? And mm-hmm. if they can't tell you what it is, they don't know what they're talking about. This has been uh, a new branch of science. It's a, it, you we're hardwired for it. Everybody knows it. But if you don't know that, anything you say down the road is coming from short information. You're doing mm-hmm. crossword puzzle with bad that's words. Where you get the dif- that's where you get the difference of we learned this to believing something and actually knowing, knowing something. Yeah. 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 But it, so. that takes approaching a person where and you know do everything you can to put their reflex down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Find mm-hmm. a little common ground when you both nod your heads about one thing, you know, you're on your way. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and we, we, we realized, you know, like, I, and I explained to her, you know, you, you have to realize that your way of thinking is an old way of thinking, number one. Number two, someone paid for you to think that way. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> and, 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 and it worked. A lot. And number three, um, you have to understand, you, you have to get educated because the, there are so many things, because of this closed minded way of th- doing things, you're actually adding, you know, yeah, to a, a bigger the, problem. The root of the problem is uh, the biggest problem if you ask the state health department or the federal health department, mm-hmm. what's your, your number one concern? It's the use, uh, overuse and abuse of opioids. Yep. And the alarming rise in the death rate to opioids. And then they go on mm-hmm. both to say the reason this is happening is uh, when, when patients get to the max of a prescription mm-hmm. and the physician won't raise it, mm-hmm. and now they won't because mm-hmm. they're being closely monitored. Right. Mm-hmm. And that effect actually means that Pain is pain. Let me tell you, I had some pain a couple of days ago for a mm-hmm. couple of days. Mm-hmm. And, you know, somebody could have stuck a needle in my arm and put me out for eight hours. I would have welcomed it. Um, mm-hmm. But all I had was a little bit of a brownie that I got down and it helped. Mm-hmm. But the... Um, and, and, and mind you, Tempest isn't... A, she's not a, a the, user. She doesn't... Yeah. Th- like, when, when, when we started on this journey together, um, you know, and I chose to go... To, to surround myself and especially my speeches and, 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 and assignments and talking about PTSD and talking about medicinal marijuana. She walked into this with a, a completely open mind because well, it was just a new, you know, you know and she. And there, anybody that can learn anything I mean, from statistics. People, excuse me for cutting yeah. off. When you have no. people living in New Jersey and it's just like already, we're already boxed in and we're not really you know, open-minded to new things and what's going on. Really and the, Him coming in and letting us know his background, where he's been, and, you know, it made me automatically, he sent me text my mom and tell her, like, mom, I have to get my passport so I can learn how to do new things. Mm-hmm. So when you have an open mind and my mm-hmm. brother, he smokes marijuana, you want to know what he's smoking and, you know, you know, get more knowledge so I'm able to let him know and share, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, she, she, educa- she got educated. Well, I personally don't think you could have a stance on anything if you don't know both sides right. mm-hmm. of the of right. the argument. Yeah. You know, well, if you, you only know, know one side, you're not mm-hmm. really, you know, making a, a, a stand on it. You gotta understand the good, the right. bad, everybody's point of view on well, it. And you, you gotta, gotta understand how to, to deal with listen. them. So you, you gotta know where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. well, the statistic that I I find when we say we're putting all things on the table, um, the American Medical Association released findings. Um, after having five institutions gather information. I know mm-hmm. one was Johns Hopkins, I think. Uh, 
University of Pennsylvania mm -hmm. or something. Uh, I forget. I'm having a bad day remembering things because of being a little sick. But they said that in the 13 states that came before New Jersey, where you could get cannabis with opioids, mm -hmm. the overdose death rate went down uh, an average is 24.8% mm -hmm. and almost 20% the first year. Mm -hmm. Because what would be happening is, tell me how this can't make sense, that the point where somebody's in pain to say, doc, it's not working, is well, I can't raise it. But what I can do is recommend cannabis. Mm -hmm. And you will find out that you will need less medicine, not just the same. Yes. And then they find the right mix and discover what synergy means is if it took 10 units of an opioid to get rid of your pain relief without cannabis, and if it took 10 units of cannabis to get rid of your pain relief without an opioid, it would take only two units of each combined. So mm -hmm. there's a synergy. You, you mm -hmm. don't get so high if, you, you know, if you're on a regimen of some sort of opiate. But... Uh, you don't need as much lefty, of both lefty by themselves, weigh, either one by themselves. Weigh in. What is your, what happened with you and your opiate use? I went from 90 milligrams of roxycodone every three hours. Wow. Cut that in half. Cut that in half again. Kept cutting it in half. And this is over a period of like 10 months. And I was able to get off that horrible drug using cannabis. I, I bought an ounce of weed. I hit a wall at four milligrams. And I couldn't get past that four milligrams. Wow, God bless. I, yeah, I couldn't get past it. So I said, okay, time for cold turkey. Bought a big bag of weed. And I just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cold turkey. Let's see, what, how can I have a good excuse for smoking a whole ounce all by myself? <laughs> quick over a couple day period yeah but that's good you know it worked it was, i bet it did I'm off those 10 pills but you man. see all that pisses me off though because when oh i know God. that in new jersey you can't get it just for pain there's at least yeah. fifty thousand. and when you yeah. look at other states and yeah. their population yeah. and go per capita um there's at least 50 and maybe as many as seventy thousand people who could benefit greatly from using this with their opiates and would if they could, but they can't mm -hmm. I got because it, I got it's it. not an indication. So yeah. that's why what gets me here every week is how do you not do this when you know, how many of those are gonna go? Oh, and what happens is, okay, you buy a uh, black market when you can't get more from a doctor. And then when that becomes too expensive, you find out that heroin is one third of the mm -hmm. cost of those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you end up going and supplementing your opiates with heroin and well, there are 24,000 arrests, drug arrests, for illicit drugs in, in, in a year in New Jersey. Yeah. And out of that 24,000, 44% of that is for marijuana. And honestly, I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm one of them, and I don't care. <laughs> well, I don't. Remember when, remember? Well, you better care. You're yeah. sitting here yeah. with a microphone. Yeah. Start yeah. caring. Just, yeah. Start yeah. caring. I don't care. I'm yeah. just saying, I don't care about, look, because I have, I have stomach pains. You know, and I, t I have no, I'm not bad with, dep uh, with you know depression. With uh -huh. You know, real. So right. you have to. So, so there's a there's a decision that you have to make that Jim just had to make, where, which right. is if I want to get better, I have to break the law. Yeah, I and I yeah, and I, I don't second yeah, no so, second thought. So yeah, yeah, and I'm but gone. and 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 one of the things that I noticed, like especially like with Tempest being in class, because she echoed the sen the same sentiments that you did. A lot of people just assume that veterans were getting the help that we needed. <laughs> it it, it was just no an assumption, otherwise. yes. And come to find out, that is not the case. They're not even getting buried properly. Yeah, come on, yeah, man. Now yeah, we're, we're, we're finding out the scope. Oh, you got you, you, you here for is. that one. Oh my yeah. God! For what we just found out, yeah. you are, yeah, we just, it's yeah. depressing, honestly. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's a, a, a article that was uh, published where they found out that you know um, they weren't props properly. Uh, disposing of the remains of soldiers who were killed in uh, wow. war. Wasn't wow. it 200? They were, put a, they were putting them in a mass yeah, grave. 2,400 body no, parts? No, no. Not wow. a mass grave. Body part. Well, I'm sorry. 2,400 yeah. body parts uh, belonging uh, to a landfill. Yeah, 200 not a, something well, soldiers? It wasn't, a, it, it, wasn't a mass it wasn't a mass grave. It was a landfill. Land yeah. 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 All right, we, we, With we garbage. Yeah, covered garbage. That. Not that I couldn't talk wow, about it all wow, day. But wow, wow. Yeah. They just... It, they were just telling me it came out today, you know. And well, I'm gonna go home and look up on that. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's it's it's, 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 it's oh my god. 
I mean, yeah. well, it was nice meeting you guys, but I have a paper Tempest. to get to. Both of us. It's an honor. Both of us. A yeah. paper about three. <laughs> yeah. So thank you guys so much. Tempest, thank, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Appreciate you stopping so. by. Come by anytime. Yes, yes, yes. yes. We can really? talk about this so in much. class. Yeah, sure. <laughs> So what we're just talking about that sometimes you have to break the law. Mm -hmm. Look at a blast from the past. I don't really care oh, wow. to the camera. That's uh, Governor John Corzine uh, uh, talking with Cheryl and me. And um, what's he going to say, right? You know, we ate him up and spit him out. Here's here's a more fun one earlier than that. I don't know if you remember James McGreevy, Governor. Governor McGreevy. Yes. That's, um, I corralled him, uh, at the, we corralled him at the uh, Cape May Lighthouse. Cheryl was a trooper, you know, we'd, we'd go, um, we'd go out and corner people. And you know how veterans and uh, children you can't ignore? I'll tell you one thing you really can't ignore. A woman laying back in a wheelchair who mm -hmm. can only move her head and her husband who wants to speak for her. People come front and center, they come running. Mm -hmm. What happened, stand with, at attention. what happened with the McGreevy thing is we were there. We have no signs, as you can see. And uh, his chief guy came over and said, oh, if you want to go stand over in the shade, the governor could be over in, in five minutes and talk with you. I'm going, wow, like a spider web. You know, mm -hmm. you walk up, they come to you. You go over there, and their daughter was there. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, as well. But what I like about that picture is whatever he's talking about, Cheryl, is not buying. Look, who's the smart one of our duo? I'm like smiling like we're doing something. And look at the look on her face. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what? She looks like me when, when Christy walked by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know Remember what? Remember that? You said that's, unimpressed. That's, that's a fair analogy. <laughs> you, the, 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 the word was yeah. unimpressed. You know, and what this is, so you know. This is going back almost 20 years now. And yeah, here I'll, I am in front of yet another administration trying to poke the guy who's mm -hmm. I got to combine yeah. that with pictures of every governor well, met governor since uh, Jim Florio mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well I mean you look at uh, 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 there's the the look of surprise when folks find out that you know um, this is the case when it comes to their soldiers and veterans who come home and this is what we this is what we get Oh, the, oh, oh. <laughs> hey, cuz. Hey, Ava. <laughs> that's, my, that's my little cousin. Here. I'm sorry. That was my little cousin, Ava. You know, <laughs> love you, mama. It's I'll okay. see you later. You know, we're, we do an open air podcast. This is a uh, part of it. You get to <laughs> yeah. really yeah. interact yeah. with interact people with who, who want to interact with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, um, uh, I'm sorry. I, I just hadn't seen Ava in so long. And. My gosh, she's gotten big and she's, you know, still beautiful, you know, with her little self. But um, going back to what I was saying earlier, just, you know, folks finding out that as, you know, the veterans aren't, don't have the access to things that they need to. And, you know, again, we should do the easy so stuff. This is the low hanging fruit. Let them have cannabis. Let their physicians recommend it for them and, and let their pain management know that if they find cannabis in their system, they mm -hmm. shouldn't even ask where it came from. Mm -hmm. It had nothing to do with what they're doing. Mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. It's all synergistic, you know. They might want to know it because they would then be prescribing too many opiates if they didn't know they were taking cannabis. Right. Well, I mean, uh, again, what the conventional, the traditional way of treating, and, and speaking to your earlier point, PTSD is a new name. It's not a new condition. Yeah, it's be called a shell shock. It's be called shell shock at one point, and who knows? Back in the Roman days, you know, ever since war, there's PTSD has been around. And how we treat it, you know, what they used to do is they used to segregate the the veterans who would come home, you know, from you know, and I'm talking like you know, um, the back in the Roman times and stuff like that. Now, there were some societies like Sparta where this was this was a part of the culture war was all they that, that they was what they lived for, for. yes and, and, and they didn't need much they were spartans yes. right right yeah you know that was in you know but for the regular folk you know um like the like the uh, athenians and stuff like that who actually you know were citizen soldiers you know and and you know when they came home imagine how what they what their ptsd must be like because you have to understand back then war was much was 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 so much more personal 
Uh, you know, what hand-to-hand hand combat. You know, right there. You know, there was this is before guns and stuff like that. So I'm actually sticking something in you, and I am killing you that way. So could you imagine what kind of dreams that these people, that those veterans must have came home with? the things that they were battling with and how it's evolved over the years. And so when you look at the evolution of, of, of war and how we treat the same condition, it, it's, it's something that, you know, we can, we actually have a say-so in it. We actually have, a, there's a means by which we can properly, you know. Um, we got a baby, uh, a possum or something, he's all about like oh my God. sitting up in the corner there and he's wow. watching our podcast. Yeah, I see him. What is he, about four inches long? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's uh he's on iodine status. <laughs> that means he just stays in the cut. So yeah. <laughs> all up in the cut. Snapchat at least. Yeah, he, he's trying he, he trying to get over here and get in this conversation. Yeah. So you know, again, you know, when we are talking about and dealing with how do we treat this condition, which has been around for you know since the beginning of war, you know, we have there is a way to which we can offer another way of treatment, not the soul, it's not going to cure PTSD, that's not what we're talking about, and, you know, we're no, just talking about a means, and, yeah. you know, to, it's an alternative to, you know, because well, it's an, opioid prescription it's, is already adding to a much bigger problem that we are already dealing with. It's not technically an alternative because it doesn't replace it, it's an adjunct uh, medicine. Right. Something and and many, with, for many, yeah. like for lefty, it's become an alternative, you know, so there's that in-between. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, there's, I don't care what kind of studies it is, you can ask anybody about mixing opiates and cannabis for pain relief. Anybody that's ever done it, taken part, knows anything about it. You're it going, it's going to either reduce or just take away completely the, yeah, the, the well, need for the... Well, generally, you know, when people find out the side effects for me with the opiates, it was a constipation. You know, people could laugh all they want about that, but that's a very important body function. And mm -hmm. when it isn't working, your health will suffer. Well, I remember when I had my surgeries on my knees, um, you know, I smashed up my knees jumping down at Fort Bragg. And when I had the surgery and I woke up and they gave me, um, they gave me the morphine drip. And I remember morphine. when they gave me the morphine, when they gave me the morphine, morphine drip and then they gave it also when they gave it to me in pill form, I always had to take a stool softener to go along with it. Yeah, well, they suggest you know, that because they know what's coming. Yeah, you're going to be constipated. So yeah. if you don't take that stool softener, you're going to really be messed up, you know, over a period of time. Um, now, the thing is, though, is that if you, when you incorporate cannabis in your regimen and it actually starts to count, cancel out that, 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 that use of... Um, you know, opioid, you know, um, you know, some, some pretty good things begin to happen for you. But unfortunately, you have to, for most folks, they have to break the law. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't even, I don't even agree with that terminology of it. You know, like, 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 like I said to you earlier, you know, there's two, there, uh, there's technically two laws, I guess. Yeah, law, the, the, laws the, of nature and laws yeah. of man. And I break down the laws of nature as that's that basically the natural law is the law of survival. You do whatever you have to do to see tomorrow. And if it harms nobody else or yes, and if, yes, if it doesn't harm all, anybody if it else, nobody else, then how can you not have the right to do it? You know, I mean, like I like to say, this is actually my body. It's the one thing I will own for my whole life. Yeah. The only thing I'll own for my whole life. Mm -hmm. It's mine. It's nobody else's. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't Never let anybody, be taken away wouldn't from let anybody tell me what furniture to put in my house, and I will not let them tell me what I may or may not put in my body. I'll, I'll do what I damn well please. Damn right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, I'm not doing it to get arrested, but I'm not looking over my shoulder either. Well, one, I'm 64, and, you know, I mean, yeah. what's going to happen at but this point? I mean, that? I could tell you like this, man, and, I, and I've said this I've said this last year. They're, they're, and since the first time I said this on this podcast, there's been plenty of times since then, plenty of times before that, that, you know, my depression has gotten, has reached dangerous levels. You know mm. what I mean? Real, mm. real dangerous levels. Because I've been through a lot of of crazy, insane things in my life. Mm -hmm. So my depression has reached points to where it's like, it's so bad that tomorrow is questionable. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. hell, this afternoon mm -hmm. is questionable. Mm -hmm. It has reached those points. 
and s sitting down, you know, smoking a little <coughs> bit. It, I'm not gonna say it's well. Obviously, I'm here, so it's it helps, but it de it does as much of a job for f for being able to slow your mind down, let you think, just relieve you, just relax you to a point where you can actually just worry about, all right, all right, all right. Mm -hmm. Now this is what has to be, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's the, without it, I promise you, without weed, I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. we I have, promise you that. We have what the closest thing to a news update every Thursday. I was going to ask. In yeah. the form of uh, Ken Wolski. German CEO of the yep. Coalition yeah. for Medical Marijuana, co-founder Ken Wolski. He's the one who comes and knows where we are. And that was going to be my question before he yeah. walked up. Was, yeah, I don't know why he's sitting down over there calling yeah. Ken Wolski. Is Ken Wolski in the house? Ladies and gentlemen, the star attraction of today's yeah. show. Uh, I don't Ken know about that. Ken Wolski. You say, you know, Ken, Ken Wolski, R-N-M-P-A. Ken Crowd went wild what, what just now. MPA? <laughs> uh, it's a master's in public administration. Man. I got that from See, Rutgers University in 1992 after so, I got my bachelor's degree in philosophy in 1971. Well, you couldn't have a better okay. man to deliver, like, news, you know? Yeah. So well, big news. What's, go what's going on? Like, well, the uh, Senate has posted S-2345 nice. for a vote. On Monday. Yeah, boy. Yeah. We are there. Yeah. So, yes, tell us Monday. what tell Monday. us what that means. Why wow. we're so happy. Start with the uh, passing out of committee thing. Explain the process and well, what we've gone to. Sure. S two three four five is the bill, the current bill to add post traumatic stress disorder to the state's medicinal marijuana program, and it had a companion bill A four five seven in the assembly, which went through um, the passed in the assembly. And uh, now it gets, goes to the uh, Senate. Now, the, the, uh, the first part of making a bill become a law, of course, is committees. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the bill has to be, when it's introduced, it has to be assigned to a committee. And that's the part for public testimony. And we have right next here, at my left, is Leo Bridgewater, who gave wonderful testimony in both the very Senate, uh, in the Assembly, and Assembly Committee, yeah. and in the Senate Committee. Uh, and th this is the most important time. And usually, Usually, if a bill passes out of committee, that is to say, it gets the endorsement of the committee that it's been assigned to, there's a very good chance that it's going to pass into law. Uh, that's because that is the time when the experts get to testify uh, to the committee members and um, they take you know, away their plausible deniability during yes. that yeah. meeting. Yes. What yes. happens yeah. is they can't then say, "I did not know that," and what's presented to them in this very public testimony it, it mm -hmm. can be used against them if they ignore what they're hearing. Um, last year, we got through the Assembly uh, Health Committee and out to the floor, and it passed yeah. in the Assembly, right. but it didn't get out of uh, committee uh, in the it Senate. Did, it did get uh, uh, right. It, it, it was not. But, yeah. It was not posted. It, they didn't. They pulled it for a vote. Yeah, well, because they, they didn't yeah. think they had the votes, and right. um, I understand. You know, it was just a bad play, and um, it probably wouldn't have been uh, signed and would have fallen off the table anyway. But now. It, we have a much better position, and that it's been posted. This is the one day the Senate's in session in what a six week period or something? Uh, well, actually, I think they added another day, the, the following Monday. It's also going to be. Yeah, they should have done their work another, when they had the yeah. chance. They mm -hmm. wouldn't have to add, mm -hmm. yeah, there, take there, their vacation days mm -hmm. away. Right. But, but uh, praise to Senator Sweeney. Yeah, um, thank, thank you, who, Senator Sweeney. And, thank um, you. Who Lefty called the office mm -hmm. three previous podcasts. So. Um, when he gets back, I think he, he could call up and he, they don't like normally to talk on the podcast and Lefty mm -hmm. could say, we're on a podcast, so uh, you don't need to really say much. It's called the thank you, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's only proper. But mm -hmm. we expect on Monday that this will pass. Yeah, we certainly hope so. That, that and, is and, amazing. And, that know, is so beautiful. So many mm -hmm. people made phone calls. Vietnam veteran Dan Brady yeah. posted that he just called Senator Sweeney's office, uh, I believe, yesterday. And you know, so many people reached out to their senators. Dan that, might yeah, have done the trick. I, I just received. I was just before you came here, uh, Cam. I, I can I had, uh, was reading a, a letter I got from uh, Senator Shirley Turner, mm -hmm. who uh, uh, let me know that she is she intends to vote yes. Mm -hmm. That's all we need. You know, so we we I I know of one yes we're going to get. Well, here, you know. yeah, another thing we're going to get yes from Senator Diane Allen, who is always a, a, a really a, an opponent of medical marijuana. And then she softened a little bit um, 
and now she vooted yes as a Republican to get it out of the Senate. Um, uh, Senator Al Dejiel did committee. the same thing. Yeah, so, but Diane Allen, uh, I'm not real keen on who's who in Republican rankings, but I notice when I uh, go downstairs in the State House and I go by the Senate Majority Leader's Office, there's two plaques on the door. It says Tom Kane, Jr., mm -hmm. and Diane, Senator Diane Allen. So she must be like next in line for the. Uh, so I, I will. I will uh, be um, uh, having Don Don Karpowicz mm -hmm. is the one that she actually seems so enthralled with Don, you know. And um, they had a little FaceTime that I bet he'd like calling and saying it would really be helpful if you would talk to any fence sitters and make sure this passes. It's really yeah. important because yeah. for Diane Allen to make any statements at all. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, even Diane Allen was great in the yeah, committee. Uh, she was. Uh, and she's a Republican, too. And we also got... Uh, got um, uh, Munoz. Uh, Munoz. Adagio. Uh, um, Adagio, right. Yeah. Adagio, yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, but the, the, the Democrats who voted against it, you know, surprised me. Fred Madden, the vice chair of the that's, that's, um, a, that's you know, kind the of Democrat. a surprise. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and Richard Cody. Now he's been. That wasn't a surprise. That's Senator opponent. Dick yeah. Cody. Yeah. And and well, now let's let's be polite now. I and did. Senator his name's his name Dick <laughs> Cody. He's and, Senator and Dick Senator, Dick Senator Ron Cody. Rice. You know, another another uh, Democrat who's been. I like, a, I like yeah, to Paul. Uh, uh, Senator to Rice. Yeah. 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 Well, that, that's yeah. not a surprise you know, either. He's been against this staunchly ever since I can remember. Yeah. He's spoken. What's the opposite of eloquently about this more than a couple times? Yeah. Well, well, when you look at when you look at having be a great podcast guest, yeah, when you, uh, he would, I, I would love to sit down and talk with them. I mean, you know, that like, would do a lot of good, Leo. I'll yeah, bet you, I bet you that would do a lot. I, of good. I, you know, because in my mind, mm -hmm. and this is what Tempest, you know, like Tempest uh, witnessed this yes, yesterday. A classmate of mine was just here, mm -hmm. and um, in my mind, I, I, I think. You know, anybody with a reasonable way of thinking, any reasonable person would, would see this and, and hear about this and, 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 and want to sign on, you know, because it's been my experience. Most people I've run across like you who are just assume that we have access to this. And when they find out we don't, that's when it's like, well, why not? You know, uh, studies show what, 58% of New Jerseyans agree that we should have uh, medicinal marijuana and should be regulated. 58% believe yeah. we should have legalized yeah. marijuana. Yes, 58%. percent believe we, we should have marijuana. Yeah, we got a vote marijuana. coming yeah. up Monday. What are we going to do about that? We've got to get uh, people there. Uh, Identifiable yeah. veterans. Well, you know, know what time? Uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, the, the session starts. And, so, and there but, will but be there are a lot of votes. Yeah. Or, I mean, there are a lot of bills that are coming up, so we don't know exactly yeah. when. But you know, the, 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 the reason for being there is because of this final vote on medical marijuana, uh, there are media outlets that will understand its significance. Oh, yes. And yeah. mm -hmm. identifiable yeah. veterans, mm -hmm. any time during this, are, uh, may be interviewed. And the reason you want to be a presence is it goes to the governor's desk. Oh, right. And you right. want to start at that final vote making your statement about him signing it. it because the minute it yeah. passes it becomes instantly about him signing it we mm -hmm. don't have to we don't have to figure anything out other than that all right. the rest we can talk about you know when it's all done but that's this, this that's is the final step in a bill becoming a law when the governor and, signs and the governor trip. told the wayne barini at barini's old world market in oh, randolph that? Um, that he would sign it, and when I asked him, did to you say Barini's Old World Market? Yeah, that's oh, Barini's Randolph, Old New World Jersey. Market in Randolph. Old oh. with an e at the end. It must be old. <laughs> the one who used to bring sandwiches yeah. here. For were they podcast. not good? Oh, they were excellent. Sandwiches. Yeah, and the governor eats there, or he gets his uh, takeout, um, pretty much every Saturday morning, uh, chicken salad on rye, and. When I asked him about uh, talking with Wayne Barini, yeah, right. Yeah. No, no, wow, I was like, it's not for right here. Cue, we'll, we'll, we'll cue take the it. deli guy behind <laughs> us. No, that's not Wayne. Um, but uh, he was walking into the state. And said, um, "Oh yeah, we've talked about that. Governor will not tip his signs it or doesn't because when he signs, it's going to look good, and it's his secondary job now to look good. It's yeah. going to be a." 
It's going to be quite. Well, a there are very compelling reasons for him yeah. to sign it. But you know, he Leo, I, right I, I, I want to tell you something. I, I also wrote to Senator Turner, and she sent a similar letter to me. Mm -hmm. And now you said that this letter said she was going to vote yes on this bill, and it does not say that. If you read this letter closely, you'll see that she does not commit herself to a yes vote in this letter. She says no. She voted yes before. She voted yes else. below yeah. on yeah. medical marijuana. You're on right. The medical marijuana bill, but she has not. She has not decided yet. She has some concerns about PTSD, and mm -hmm. I think I think we need to look at this letter a little more closely mm -hmm. uh, to see exactly what she says. She it's acknowledges. Take a meeting. She acknowledges your email, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Expressing your support for S two three four five, which would it, and we know what it's going to do. And she appreciates hearing from you and learning of your position in such an important issue. Mm -hmm. Your, she, your, your. Yeah, she acknowledges mm -hmm. that you know you support it, and she acknowledges hearing from you and and appreciates hearing from you. Go and on, then man. and then she goes on to uh, say nationally, the public sentiment has been shifting from the hardcore war on drugs approach. In, of the 1980s to a more sophisticated approach, That's mm -hmm. which Copy and paste recognizes mm -hmm. the me medical benefits of some of these drugs, and her record reflects her support for medical marijuana in the treatment of chronic and terminal illnesses, and she notes that in 2010 she voted yes in favor of the New Jersey Compassionate Use Medical Marijuana Act, which mm -hmm. legalized marijuana in, in New Jersey. And she also, she goes on to talk, uh, uh, it was something that she didn't say in my letter, she recognizes you uh, recognize that for some individuals suffering from PTSD, medical marijuana represents relief from their symptoms. And she understands that it is, is our nation's veterans who are disproportionately affected by PTSD. Your personal testimony in support of S2345, which I read in a NewJersey.com article, was heartfelt and compelling. compelling yep. And I agree that our veterans deserve access to potentially life-saving treatments, especially those that will alleviate symptoms which resulted from their service. However, as a legislator, I must be wary, wary of, quote, backdoor, Door. unquote, attempts to legalize the recreational use what of is, marijuana What in as the world well. does that belong in that letter? How does that belong in that letter? That yeah. I don't get it either. That yeah. is a red, red flag. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. it is. This it is. is like and, the governor so, replying, so well, I don't want it to get into yeah. uh, rec uh, legalization yeah. right. every, at every turn. That is, I'm sorry, a very ignorant thing to say in well, response. Yeah. What do they think is going to happen if, if uh, <laughs> they legalize well, it anyway? When I, I, mean, when I had my, um, when I had my, uh, uh, my, my classmate was here earlier, and we were talking about um, something happened in class yesterday, where I got into it with a, another classmate who has an old way of thinking, cause, and she's a nurse at that, mm -hmm. and so <clears throat> very close-minded and whatnot, and. I was explaining to her, you know, trying to educate, and she didn't want to hear it. And so when you, like, when I, because you, you, th first of all, thank you for correcting me. You're right, and mm -hmm. I do remember that, and I do remember reading that part about I'm being wary. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Somehow or another, a lot of people think that if you legalize it today, tomorrow, we got uh, uh, we have a, a, a brand new epidemic, right? And there's going to be all right. these new people who are going to be, and it's like, no, it doesn't work that way. No. And right. and and in fact, studies show the actually opposite happens. Exactly. And 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 that yet part, they still you, keep yeah, saying yeah. that. So yeah, and then you and and, myth, and then myths you, don't die. Yeah, and so. Here's the here's the evidence. I am I am actually bringing you facts. I am showing them to you mm -hmm. that it is a fact that states who have a, a medicinal marijuana program it, that include and one that more a little more expense, extensive than ours, there it, it's a fact they see a re, a reduction in the number of opioid prescriptions being written and other prescriptions and, yes and, and a lot of other and things and too but which is death yeah yeah opiates. yes yes and, Same and 25%. like this is yeah this is a fact mm -hmm. and for whatever reason people look at this fact and then they and they're married to the myth yeah and they defend this myth and 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 so you 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 go now we're into the oxymoronic politics you want me to have you want you you want to take care of me, but the way that you want to take care of me shows that you don't your way care isn't about working. Yeah, I, got a, I got a question. Yeah, your a, way has gotten I, us to twenty-two suicides a day. Yeah. Leo, right. have you ever seen somebody like that sit down and 
in a recorded conversation with somebody that knows better. I have not. No. The trick is to get them. The reason they can do what they do is they go ahead and say, yeah, the sky's not blue, and they turn away, and it's, it's gone. But if they go do that in public, you know, it's like why Chris Christie doesn't uh, talk about this in public. You know, he'll say the wrong thing. It'll come back and bite him. And, you know, at least if they kept their opinion, have uh, credible proof what morons they are. You well, know? And, and they might need a medication themselves because anybody that can find ways to not observe facts. If they want to argue this, go argue with the American Medical Association. That's right. who got the information yeah. you're talking now, about. Now, 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 let me tell you this. There are We're two types of... We're going to back to Ken after this. So there are two types of opposition. Tell. Yeah. There's, there are two types of opposition here, okay? One type is the folks who are married to the myth and the old way of thinking, right? And then there's the, the, the second type, which is the most dangerous ones, and that is the ones who have the sinister uh, way of thinking in regards to, you know, um, being married to Big Pharma. And so... Uh, yeah, yeah, and you know, but the, uh, if I could just jump in for a minute, the, uh, the Institute of Medicine addressed that concern about, you know, whether or not medical marijuana would lead to legalization of marijuana. And, you know, they said that that was not an appropriate question to ask. It was not an appropriate question to ask what... If, if a medicine is appropriate for a person for, who is suffering from an illness, that is, is the question. Is it mm -hmm. safe for mm -hmm. that person to use? Is it effective mm -hmm. for that person mm -hmm. to use? Mm -hmm. The question of it's, it's, it's having an influence on legalizing or, or influencing the Business. policy of other, of other you know, uh, drug policies has, has nothing to do with the question of whether or not it is a safe and appropriate medicine for patients and who are you suffering know who from that. So, so the, the, the Institute of Medicine. The, the National that. Academy of Sciences Institute of Medicine says said that. so. Yes. So, so go so argue the, with them, all right? So, right. so, the, so the, the backdoor comment in this letter totally, you know, is that was what is that's what makes that comment inappropriate it's in an this context. It's an inappropriate yes. concern. Because yes. we because because look, look, you, I'm hurting. And you're talking to me about backdoor. That like that 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 is useless information for me, the person who is hurting. You know, and exactly. and, and again, exactly. that's where the oxymoronic politics comes into play. Mm -hmm. You know, like what are you like? This is how this is how things get. Uh, re, this is what retards progress. This is where you get the label of not being evolved enough in your way of thinking to see beyond a uh, old way of thinking right. or and that's this speaks to that second category do you have a more sinister reason for being this this not this this resolute in this way of doing yes. things mm -hmm. that and 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 it, and it's and it's in that way that i find that that those are the most dangerous ones the ones who are not going to tell you to your face you know it, 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 like well, racism, I would much gotta, rather. We, we got to get back to New York. Well, yeah. Maui. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the you know the sinister reason is probably just you know financial support from. Yeah. The yes. That, that's is, what I mean. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah that's that's exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. Big pharma. Yeah. You know because again you know when when we're talking about reducing the number of opioid prescriptions and 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 all that that's that's <laughs> not good. That's good news for the American people. That is very bad news for big pharma. Big pharma, pharmaceutical yeah. companies. How, how that is, it's been that proven news. that cigarettes kill you. Damn. Proven that cigarettes kill you. No, they mean, are still legal to eight, purchase right. because it's a uh, big tobacco. Because right. it's big money. Yeah, Six, it's big money. Mm -hmm. yeah. Five. Yeah. I'm counting down to the news. Four, three, two, <laughs> one. Take it away, Ken. What else do you have for us? What's going on in the world? Uh, well, uh, well, wait. Uh, first, I want to mm -hmm. finish with this. Yeah. This letter yeah. okay, from but, uh, but Senator. Don't get sidetracked and get back to news. This well, is this news. Is news. Go ahead. Uh, you know, Listen. since you've been such a vocal advocate for SU2345, she's referring to Leo Bridgewater here, you may be interested to know that the New Jersey Department of Health recently confirmed that a newly appointed medical review panel will be accepting public comments for more medical conditions to be eligible for treatment by medical marijuana. This panel will accept petitions in writing from August 1st through August 31st. For more information, visit the New Jersey Department of Health to view the public notice and download the petition form. Now that's all very well and good, and yes, you know mm -hmm. we are. Uh, there, uh, some people do plan to put in a petition. How long to would add, that take? About uh, a year? At least a year, Jim. At least yes. a year. Yeah. That's yeah. if they recommend it. What it happens right. when they recommend it? Does it have to be implemented? 
Uh, no, the no. Pen, no the, so they the can recommend the it. It'll take a year. To. It doesn't have to be uh, admitted. The Commissioner of Health can just say no and right. doesn't even have to say why. Are we going to risk veterans' right. lives Not only over that, that when we can get it done now? We can get it done now with mm -hmm. this That's going to save about, mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's going to save some part. lives. Mm -hmm. Not only that, Jim, but if you'll remember, in 2013, the Coalition for Medical Marijuana in New Jersey submitted to the Department of Health a petition for rulemaking. I do. And part of that petition for rulemaking included the recommendation that post-traumatic stress disorder be included as a qualifying condition for marijuana therapy in New Jersey. And we gave the reasons why. And the same reasons that we presented to the Department of I mean, to the legislature. And the Department of Health turned us down flat on that. Uh -huh. So we do not want to be turned down twice by the Department of Health. Well, this is why we want this this uh, legislation to pass, I and mean, we want it to pass in the Senate on Monday, S2345, oh. to add post-traumatic stress disorder to the list of qualifying conditions. Yeah, well, you know, we got to uh, make sure thank, that thank, senators know wrong. between now and Monday if we could do a little Facebooking with people, find out who their senators are. Absolutely. And, and in some way, shape, or form, say whatever way you vote on this bill, we are going to need to know why, and I will be wanting to have a discussion why you know you cannot vote against it and then not have a lucid discussion about why that ain't going to happen there's no hit and run here no more hit and run you're going to vote against it you're going to talk about it and we have the power to make that happen i'll wear anybody down mm -hmm. i picketed congressman frank palone's house mm -hmm. where he lives you know the 11 to 2 bullies when we when we did the um one of the things i uh, and, and ken you were there one of the things that stuck stuck out in my mind when we were uh, when, I, when I testified before the committee on Bill 2345 was uh, listening to uh, Senator DeGio. And one of the things that she said, because I, I believe, um, I believe you told me she, the last time she was a no, you know, and then this time she was a yes. And so one of the things that stuck out to me was when she spoke, um, she said, um, you know, I'm from the generation where the, the, the guys who went off to Vietnam, you know, she was like, those were my high school classmates, those were my college classmates, you know. And she said, I remember what happened with them and, 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 and the, the challenges that they had once they returned home. And I think what, what really, I think what kind of messed with her or what just wasn't sitting right with her was, we're right back, we're, we're right back, we're doing that again. We're back right. there again. Right. And I really, like, the way she, you know, the way she spoke was, it, it made me feel as though um, it, it, it kind of hit, it kind of hit home for her in terms of, wow, this is, you know, history is repeating itself, and we're doing the same, stu and, and we're not, we have an opportunity to change things. Now, Senator um, uh, Vitali uh, said, you know, or um, not Vitali, but, uh, Senator Whalen? Will, yeah, he said, uh, you know, look, it's like a catch-22, you know, and, and we have to do something. And the one thing that we can't do anymore is keep talking about it. We got to get these guys some help. We got to get these people help. They need the, and, and, and we, we can't keep, you know, uh, st uh, uh, study after study after study after study while people are, at, while our veterans are actually and we have there's something that we can do to help them yeah, well, you know yeah, they, there's not they're not mutually exclusive we can help them now the way i profess we should do let's let veterans have cannabis watch how they do and look for a study that says they shouldn't sure well, there, isn't there uh, one yeah, going on at university well, of penn well uh we already have some studies you know in from the universe uh, in from new mexico where mm, yes uh, uh, one of my colleagues from the american cannabis nurses association brian crumb a nurse practitioner did a study of hundreds of patients in New Mexico that he recommends medical marijuana for ex exclusively for post-traumatic stress disorder. Not a single one of those patients dropped out of the program because not they one. could not tolerate uh, the effects of marijuana. What does that say? And there was and, but that it's safe, and that there and that there was uh, a significant decline in the painful symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, mm, in, in, uh -huh. in, in a uh, in a in a why and a large percentage of the uh, population of the patients who were using medical marijuana. Now, are the PTSD. people that are against this 
looking for that information? Yeah. And the people who are fence sitters, are they looking for that information? This has information has to be brought to them. That's well, right. we got to uh, show them our cards. So to, if to they go them, the wrong way, to them, we are the opposition. Yeah. So what? So, and, and this is again my way of thinking. Um, because I know that I am I am the ops of uh, 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 the the uh, opposition. No, no, I do they're, the, they're the opposition. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, no, listen to them. Not us, because, them. No, no, no. Listen to what I'm saying. Because I know to them I am the ops opposition. Yeah. Then the onus is on me yeah. to educate myself, not only on their stance. But also on my stance. You know, an, you an, know. an interesting point uh, would be, okay, then educate me, and simply let somebody who's against it try to educate you, and without arguing with them, just ask the right questions. What study did that come from? I understand studies are important. Uh, yeah, uh, well, actually, that was anecdotal. Oh no, no, anecdotal's not good, is it? Okay, but anyway, t educate me more. You know, it would be a backhanded. Uh, they they that's slap, that's, that's but they will not sit down at the table, oh, ever. No, we, we look, can, we, first we, of all, we, them trying to educate you on those uh, is like they're running it's, it's like me trying to school you. my man right here on try on how to try to put a rifle together. I don't know how to put a rifle together. This man does know how to put a rifle together. Yeah, I'm so not who, gonna school him on something yeah. he knows when I don't know nothing about it. Well. How are you going to school somebody on anything if they won't sit down with you? How are they going to school me if they won't sit down with me? You know, you can't school somebody with sound bites. It doesn't work, and that's the way we do it. So, and, uh, of course, the um, uh, Department of Health is going to be accepting petitions to add qualifying conditions for the medical marijuana program um in uh from august 31st to august 31st there he is. Um, oh governor christie's coming right behind us uh there he is jim right there there he is governor good afternoon christie. governor christie hey governor the post-traumatic stress bill it's getting a vote on monday so could we talk on tuesday yeah come come, come sit down with us this is yeah. this is a big thing this is huge it's, it's real and uh, we'll talk to you later Enjoy okay. lunch. Okay. Was that okay? Yeah, sorry, man. I was trying to get Ken, you Ken, did you get a snap? Uh, I think I did. I didn't get it. I think it's true. Are you freaking How? How? He is literally hard to miss. The one day. Uh, Forget about the podcast. Oh, yeah, the podcast thing got him. He's probably standing in the way, but I'm sure we got it. I'm, look. Uh, no, I'm, 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 I'm sure laughing at our, some, our 50th, some point of him. 50th got podcast. Got on Technical difficulty. Where's your camera? I don't know. I'm a little I'm, no, I am sure. Look, I didn't look. bring mine today. And look, what I, do you I got? I what, what about everybody? All right, all right. Hey, I'll tell you. Look, it was pointed no. that way. As long as that's on, it got some variation of Chris Christie. Okay. Anyway, and thank you to Ken Walsh. And I was very polite, even though I didn't want to be. Well, that was yeah. very good. Uh, well, you should be polite. We, we got governor. You have to respect the office of the governor. We do. Know? Mm -hmm. You know, even if mm -hmm. you have concerns well, about that was the person, that was, well, that was, was very respectful. It was very respectful. Mm -hmm. We got That's video. It was damn respectful. But you have to More respect respectful. the office, <laughs> even no, if okay. you disagree. You know, okay, Ken, what we got is yeah, I, we, I, haven't I, seen, I, we haven't seen a smile I like a that joke. from him. We haven't seen a smile like that from him all year. Now, let me tell you what's going to go on. This is... He's going he's gonna to steal it. He's going to sign it. Mm -hmm. He's going to make it his just by signing it right away. What if he says to the Senate, and I expect you to get, uh, get this to my desk immediately, so we stop playing around with veterans and Donald Trump knows this and whatever. That. What do we care? As long as it happens, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. feeling it, man. This is a new step if it passes. And if Sorry it about that, Lefty. I was trying to get, it, get you sooner, man. We, we, we were trying hard. I was trying. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. All the You'll technology. Peeling some potatoes tonight. Is that what they do? KP duties? That what it's called? <laughs> yeah. Doing some KP tonight. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. You, you were great, Leo. Just to <laughs> recognize that he was coming. Uh, uh -huh. You know, that was uh, boy. It's like talking and having eyes in the sky or something. Hey, well, well uh, the, the the last time, a um, uh, couple of weeks ago, um, when I wasn't able to make it to the podcast, um, there was it was, it was as, as it was happening. I could hear him coming in over my house. Mm -hmm. So 
I tried calling Lefty. With a helicopter? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. His, the, the, the final, their, 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 their flight path goes literally over my house because mm-hmm. I live in Mill Hill. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> when he was coming in and I had the baby, you know, I said, oh, my God, he's coming in. And I looked at the time. So I, I said, well, let me call. Let me uh, try to get with uh, Jim. He didn't answer his phone. Lefty didn't answer his phone. So I sent a text message. Get your stuff ready. Governor should be there in a few minutes. How about that? And so, um, and you can see on the podcast, <laughs> you can see Lefty, you know, looking at his phone. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, he starts doing his thing. And How about that? Jim was talking, and then but someone else started talking. Don't Lefty. all helicopters sound alike? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. no. I've, I've spent enough, uh, I spent enough time around them all to know what uh, the difference is and stuff like that. And, and again, that. I could see it, you know. Yeah. So I... You know, I just, you know, looked at it and I said, hey, you know, I sent the message. Jesse was here and she mm-hmm. was she was uh, doing the live feed on Facebook. So I'm sending messages on Jesse's live feed. Get yourself ready. He's coming. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> and, well, that, that was really great. <laughs> but uh, so he flashed by for a minute and smiled at us and um, acknowledged us, I guess. But uh, mm-hmm. but anyway, uh, so we did. Uh, I, I, I got a picture of him walking in. But. But uh, so anyway, what's the news? I, I want to move along to the the new new thing. Uh, mm-hmm. The uh, yeah, news. Well, some some, <laughs> some of the some of the news. Uh, United States Senators Senator Bob Menendez and Cory Booker are going to host a forum on addiction and healing. Ooh. And this is going to be on August eighth, only an hour, one hour from eleven thirty to twelve thirty at St. Barnabas Medical Center in Livingston, New Jersey. And uh, you need to sign up if you want to go. But it's very interesting because. Vivek Murthy, the United States Surgeon General, is going to be there, and, wow. and David Shulkin, the Under Secretary for Health from the United States Department of Veterans Affairs, is going to be there as well. And it's going to be a forum on addiction and healing with the two senators and the Surgeon General and the Under Secretary for Health at the VA. So that sounds like a very interesting thing. And if uh, any of the veterans are, are you know, available to attend this, I signed up. I plan to go uh, on August the 8th. That's uh, on uh, that August the eighth is a Monday. Yes, it's Monday. Uh, a, a, oh. week, a week from this Monday. So. So, that's three days after Suicide Squad comes out. I just want to say that. <laughs> Suicide Squad. Yeah, it's a movie. I really want to see that movie. Um. Okay. Uh, 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 no, that's 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 actually uh, um, a day I have to take my final. <laughs> well, uh, from 11.30 to 12.30. It's only for an hour. Uh, it, it, wor- it worries me a little bit because it's, p- it's sponsored by a partnership for drug-free New Jersey, which is a, uh, you know, a concern. Uh, but also by the... Marijuana is not a drug. It's a plant. It just grows that way. And you just yeah. so happen to set it on fire. There are some effects. Hungry, happy, sleepy. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. But, you know, the... Uh, the Partnership for Drug Free America is very opposed to, you know, any kind of marijuana reform. Of course so, they are. Um, you know, they're um, like you gotta, you gotta, some of the leading opponents I, in New Jersey. I don't oh. even believe anymore, uh, like anybody on, on on a major scale, or, or like that holds any kind of office or anything, really even has uh, their own opinions any more of this matter. I really, I'm at the point where I think their whole thing is bought and paid for. Yeah. Well, that's that's the that's the second yeah. type of opposition I was talking about. The ones who have a sinister thing because they're they're married to a particular idea, and they've been married to that idea for a very long time. Yeah. So once you commit to something like that, in this particular, because you have to understand in this in this arena, particularly when you're talking about politics, to make a shift in policy or in the way you approach things, that is that's that's a major thing, but it's also taboo. Yeah, you know, it's not very often that you will find someone who is a staunch opponent of something turn around and become a proponent of something. Now, here's the thing: not without something major Most, happening. Yes, and I was gonna say, normally, when that does happen, it's probably more than likely because something personal happened to them. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And unfortunately, you know, um, that's that's really what it takes for a lot of people that something personal, ha- like something happened to somebody, either to them or someone very close to them, and before they, they even begin to rethink. And, and so 
because you, you'll hear it a lot. You'll hear it often. Folks will say, you know, tragedy um, always it, begets change. Yes. If I had, if this had never happened to me, always. you know, I would have never known or I would have never done the research to find out and then come to find out, you know, I've been on the wrong side of history. And, and that's where we are in, when it comes to, you know, um, marijuana period is that a lot of people are going to be on the wrong, are, 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 are currently and will be on the wrong side of history. And for a lot of people, they will be on the wrong side of history for all the wrong reasons. Right. I could understand if you, hey, this is the way I grew up and this is the way I was raised and all that stuff. That's one thing. But when you are on this side of history because of money, that will go down in history. You know, and it will, we will be looked upon, and, you know, our grandchildren, and, and understand something. But you know history. You know, you, your, your thoughts, your comments earlier uh, when you were talking about Sparta, Athena, mm -hmm. all that stuff, I, I love history too. So let me know exactly how, you know, this is no new thing. Greed and uh, using politics to, to, you know, to serve your own ends and all of that, that has been going on for hell. It was how Julius was killed. Julius uh -huh. Caesar was killed because they had their own means. Uh -huh. He didn't. You know, uh -huh. he wanted to go someplace else, so they killed him. You know, like, it, this is crooked politicians. Are, everything that we know, we're built on them. Mm -hmm. Well, everything. And, but it, it's also, um, you know, and, and not to, you know, um, get into the whole beating of, of, of politicians and stuff like that, but you, you, you do have to, you have to understand that, you know, um, we have to think in uh, six, seven, eight, 10, 12 steps down the road. Yeah. And when, and so when I'm saying you're going to be on the wrong side of history, you know, 50 years from now, you know, they're going to look back and this is how you will be written, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, I tell my son this, you know, you're part of, you, you are, my, I told my son the other day, you are part of the most recorded generation in the history of yes. the world. Yes. You know, your grandchildren, your great, 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 great grandchildren will be able to push a button somewhere and pull up a picture or a video of you at this age saying the things that you're saying, yes. doing the things that you're yes. doing. We, so I can't true. do that. I, I, I cannot find something on my parents or my grandparents or my great grandparents. Whereas your, 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 your descendants will be able to do that with you. And so you have to think about what it is you putting out into the world, particularly when it comes to the internet and social media. And you have to think about the way you're presenting yourself. Well, a lot of times politicians fail to, uh, to understand that point, that you are, you are, everything you're saying and doing is being recorded. And it, there will come a time where we can look back on this. And when we look back on it, you know, you can't rest your loins on saying, well, I, you know, I, I, I was doing, you know, this is, I thought I was doing what I thought was the right thing at the time. And That's not what yeah, you know, uh, uh, Was it Will Rogers paraphrasing him said uh, it's hard to get a man to understand something when his livelihood depends on him not understanding it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yeah. That, yep. That's, yeah. that's that's that's. Oh wow, that was that awesome. sums it up yeah. beautifully. Yeah, that was yeah. That, yeah. that just I mean, basically says it all yeah, right but, there. Yeah, Ken just Ken just shut us yeah. both down with that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what I don't yeah, know I'm what to say. say. Yeah. That, yeah. Mean, that's that's like, the yeah, entire uh, point. Uh, time to go home. Ken yeah. just shut it down for everybody. <laughs> with that that's one. a wrap. Yeah. That was that, the, cut. Done. Mic drop. Yeah. 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 Drop the mic, Ken. Walk off. Ken had yo. Ken had a mic drop just now. Yeah. Yeah. That that wow. But it's. In all honesty, it's true. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is that I'm, uh, we're at the point now for me, you know, and I said this when we first met, you know, you don't know to be embarrassed. You, you, you don't even know to be embarrassed with the way you're thinking. And, uh, and that's in regards to, you know, the local politics here in Trenton, mm -hmm. you know, dealing with the, with the politicians here. Because there are <laughs> things happening here to your people, you know, uh, 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 the, the number one concern of a governor, a mayor, a president is the safety of the people, right? Sure. And Should so, be. yeah, it, it's supposed to be. And 
right now, when you look at the opioid epidemic here in the city of Trenton, we have a public safety issue. This is a public safety right. issue. It's a crisis. Yes, it's a crisis, yes. And, and, and when you have the, you know, the killings and you have the things that are happening on the streets of the city of Trenton, you know, again, let's not forget, this is the capital city of New Jersey. Right. And we need to have, we, you, you, it, when you, when you're constantly looking at how is it possible we keep hiring unqualified people to hold high level jobs and, and, and come to, and what the, the reason why they're, un, what makes them unqualified is their inability to evolve in their way of thinking. And that inability to evolve is what's retarding the progress and the pro, the progress of this city moving forward. And, and, and leading from the front because we are the capital city of New Jersey. You know, that's, yeah. the, that, that's the thing, you know, and again, just this is West State Street. All you have to do is go one block over and it's a war zone. Yeah. That's where all you have to yeah. do, yeah, all you have to do is go one do block down. Do you realize how? Do you realize how many of the states it's like that? I mean, hell, yeah. our nation's capital is in one of the worst cities in the country. Yeah, yeah like but, wow, yo. Yes, but that's he, mind blowing. He, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know, um, you're right, but I just want to keep it to New Jersey. No, I get you. And, I just and, wanted and, to say and that. To Trent, right. yeah, and, 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 well, and and you know, I mean, there are other uh, post-industrial cities like. Uh, uh, Patterson and Newark and yes. Camden. Camden yes. is Camden is oh, it's, horrible. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's horrible. It's, and and again, yeah. you know, you look at when we talk about PTSD, going not having the, you don't have to go to war to get PTSD. Right. We you know right. look at what happens here, and particularly in this city. You know, remember you asked the question, how does you know post traumatic stress disorder play out on the children here in the city? Yeah. How does post traumatic stress disorder play out on the adults and the senior citizens? You know, and it has, and when you walk around this city, you see that there are a lot of people in this city, you know, and, and uh, who are suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. I'd say 40% of the children of the inner city suffer from PTSD simply as a result of their economic and social conditions that they live with. Do you, well, they get do a you remember? They and, can be um, patient. And yeah, and so. You remember and, back in the day and, in and LA. So, and, so, and so there, you, that, that to me, is what speaks to the concern that Senator Turner spoke to as far as a back door. Absolutely. And it's like, uh, you know, you know yeah, like, yeah. You, like you, like this is where we, this is how it, this is what we've been talking about. Right. You know, the moment we come up with a, a, a this, and this is something that, mm. first of all, truth be told, the the industry as a whole ought to be embraced in this state. Period. Lefty had a good idea. Well, What's that? We, I guess, we're talking for a second and thought it would be more than appropriate. How, Ken, how long does it take a bill? If it, suppose it was passed on Monday. Would it be at his desk like Wednesday or something? Uh, I, I think it goes through an office of whatever. And uh, legislative it, it, service. It gets over be, pretty quick, oh, well, though. It can get over yeah. like next day. Sure. So. Um, they could probably get it there I, the same day. but. Uh, you know, well, my point is it, this. It, it, but this is, this is beyond that. I want to be proactive. This is what the hell we do. You know, I mean, we can get analytical as we want. But when we have a strike to make, we got to take it. And I think, um, uh, actually, my resident advisor on all things in the state house, who knows more about that than all of us combined, is Colleen Begley. She like this was her playground for a while. She knows Jean Ashmore. She knows all of these people. And she told me, ever want to get something to the governor? Don't go through your normal channel. Just walk in across from his office. The first lady you come to, she'll tell me your name. I'll see her. Um, Saturday morning, and I walk in and say, uh, yeah, Colleen Bailey told me that you'd be the one to give this to. It's pretty important. It's about, you know, and the governor would want to see this. And that's all I'm going to have to say. We're going to invite him on the podcast to uh, sign the bill on Thursday. Oh, wow. Because everybody wins. Oh, that's great. Well, that's uh, a great uh, idea. Yeah, I think yeah. so, too. Okay, first of all, nothing so gained, nothing ventured, nothing to lose. Uh, Mm -hmm. No risk, yeah. mm -hmm. potential benefit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he's shrewd. I, that look, it's like, mm -hmm. it's burned in my mind. Ken, he just walked by the first time the sign that said foot traffic study, we think. Picture of Bill Baroni, me and him. He kind of 
saw that and it kind of opened them up, <laughs> you know? Like, I think it might be the first time he put together that we did meet a long time ago. Um, I think that there is some sort of chance that he might think, okay, risk benefit, what do I gain? I look like a, a compromiser. I, I go there and, and, and do this, you know? I ask them, can you have some veterans there? I'll be there. You know, mm -hmm. this is, would play so good to him. And what he's thinking yeah. about now is the welfare of New Jersey. Oh, I'm sorry, that's somebody else. What he's thinking about now is the welfare of Donald Trump. This is good for Donald Trump. To come and do this would pick at what Democrats would soundly approve of, you know, uh, independence. So, I mean, okay, yeah. the governor right, wouldn't figure it it's out. A, it's a good, it's a good yeah. plan. Uh, see, see how it flies. That's a good idea. That's so you're so going to write up this invitation, a formal invitation, and yeah, and, I am. And, and um, take it to him on uh, Monday or uh, sometime uh, next Thursday. No, I think uh, I'll uh, bring it by Monday. I was going to say, write it up I, Monday. I'll, I'll bring it by Monday before the vote and say this is about to get passed today. That's jumping the ball. Okay, what if it didn't? I don't know, what am I risking yeah, anything? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, why you put if. You know, if this hurt, gets passed, I'll, then you I'll should do come. that, mm -hmm. and um, All right, good. I'll name drop as many good. things as I can, and uh, maybe we can do that. Is there anything else, New Ken? Well, did you talk about the petitions uh, that the Department of Health is going to start accepting petitions to add qualifying conditions? Only in passing. Uh, yes. From they, August uh, 1st to August 31st, they're, it's on their website. The, anyone can submit a petition. You have to use the forms that they, or at least you have to address all the issues on the forms and so they re highly recommend that you use the petition form that's available on the New Jersey Department of Health website and you must submit this uh, completed petition addressing all of the issues uh, uh, by certified mail that has to be postmarked between August 1st and August 31st. I got a legitimate question here. Uh, this is the only time for what a year's period that they're going to do this yes. take, probably. Yes. Um, what happens, this is a long time, a year, what if new information becomes available that's pertinent? It, the, you know, there should be a way to have an addendum with science or, or something because it kind of be unfair if you're going to go right at it now. Okay, but, you know, that could be the difference be in their opinion. Yeah, well, it may depend on when the, when the new information becomes available. Uh, the, the, commit, the panel will have two months to decide after August 31st. So they will be making their decisions in the month of, uh, by the month of October, uh, the end of October. Well, that is good news. October, the end and of October. For, for PTSD, and then we've the, got a couple And then there on. will be a two-month uh, public com comment period. So if, if uh, so that that's that Where they don't October, have to say anything? Uh, November and December. Public comment where they sit there and nod their heads or don't look at you and don't. Well, we are not going to reply. You're allowed to make a public comment. That's well, kind of fun too, but well, you know, unfortunately, they've done this that, before. That has been our experience. That you has. know, the public comment period has only been sort of uh, the the letter of the law rather than the spirit of the law. Uh, you know, they allow us to make public comments, but then they disregard all the comments that we make. Yeah. So you know, and they that, don't have to say yeah, why. And they don't have to say why. No. Well, they 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 can. Uh, they should explain in some, yeah. uh, you know. It, it's not even a good dog di dismissive and pony show. It not have a dog. Uh, <laughs> don't have a pony. So any, at any rate, there, <laughs> so there's a four-month comment. Uh, by the end of the public comment period, you've already gone four months past the uh, period of time that, you know, these petitions will be uh, submitted. So it depends on when that. I, I believe probably up until the end of the public comment period that uh, there may they may well accept uh, new new information, yeah. and then after that the commissioner has six months to make a final decision about uh, uh, uh -huh. the the panel's recommendations. So this it, is why that, that's this is why months. we love you coming here, Ken. You know you give us the real deal, and yeah. we appreciate that. So. So at any rate, you know, it... Um, you say it like you know it, what you're it, talking it about. It may well be, you know, an exercise in futility, but nevertheless, yeah. it's... Okay, thank you. Lou. It nevertheless is, uh, you know, uh, a legitimate ch uh, opportunity for... It is. ...people who we are... We've got to play it for it, everything we can. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It is no, a huge uh, opportunity. We, we, we definitely it would be all there is if we, we weren't having legislative success. Mm -hmm. Right. Real, real so what do you think, Lefty? We got a shot at getting the governor on? He promised not to call him what you've called him before, and I think he'll come. I'll take back half the things I said about him. Yeah, I'll take back half of mine. That's a whole. And let's remove some cones. If he signs the bill and comes on the podcast, yeah. 
I guess we'll remove all the cones. See, yeah, if he signs the bill, I can't take the cones down. We need more stuff. Need more? Yeah, I mean, whatever is up next. And see, the cones are relevant come the crunch at election time. It's people will be looking for angles. Bill Baroni will be on trial. Governor Christie, who hired Bill Baroni uh, to do this, recommended him. Didn't recommend the right person for the job, he's telling us. So what are you doing now, Governor? Oh, I'm recommending people for positions for a potential president. He graduated. I'm looking over my shoulder to see if the governor's sneaking out while I'm saying something about him. Yeah, <laughs> never know. I am. It's like talking about your dad and you look over at the door or something, you know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that smile said he's going to sign. You know what? It, the smile, I think, was he walked by uh, that sign and the cones and he laughed because he <laughs> knows that next week he's going to be saying, oh, look, you took the cones down. Uh, it'll come. They'll come down. I'll take them down for the last half of the season if he does that. But then I can. We lose opportunity. And, uh, of course, in Pennsylvania, new development, uh, the um, uh, letters that are, will protect the parents of uh, uh, children who need medical marijuana uh, have gone out to several parents, and uh, it, it allows them to uh, import marijuana from other states. Same as Pennsylvania. Hey, yeah. Reed. Reed Descura. And they don't ask how it got here. Reed's having a baseball game today at the uh, Trenton Thunder. Uh, there's going to be a fundraiser for Reed Gisiora at the Trenton Thunder today. Nice. Uh, if anyone can uh, attend that, uh, please do. Um, Go Trenton Thunder. Right. All right. Yeah. Boom, boom. Uh, so anyway, that's a very good um, uh, a development in Pennsylvania that uh, these letters have gone out from their medicinal marijuana program. You know, I mean, geez, they're allowing patients to get access to medical marijuana very shortly after after the bill passes into law, Governor Wolf signs yes. it into law. You know, I mean, they're, they're moving with the speed of light compared to what New Jersey did. Um, so at, at least at least at least for the parents of children who have, uh, uh, you know, well, serious illnesses. They saw our example of what not to do and followed it by not doing it. That was our example. OK, don't do this. I was quick kids will die. Did so. I'm sorry. I, I was looking over at Reed and thinking something else. In nodding my head um, a three month old child is the youngest yeah. medical marijuana patient in the country now a three month old yeah three month old child yeah. um, stopped seizures at three months at just under three three months old isn't that amazing you know, it, that and, you know three month old you know, children can safely use you know medical who I marijuana. don't want to tell that to right how do you say to Paul and, uh, and, and Phil yeah, right you know, your daughter died at 15 months old, and this girl got help at three months old. This could have happened to you. Yeah. This could have helped save your daughter's life. Right. But New Jersey was slower than molasses on this. Yep. And, you know, medical, uh, uh, edible medical marijuana is still not available in New Jersey. Although I did hear through the grapevine that um, uh, Compassionate Sciences is uh, about ready to go forward with the uh, production of lozenges. They hope to have it available sometime in August. So. Well, you know, again, snails play pace, but it's going in the right d direction. You know, sometimes the wave's coming in, and sometimes it's, you yeah. know, wait till the next one. And uh, if that's a anywhere remotely the truth, hopefully it'll expedite the process mm -hmm. uh, for other things. And uh, of course, locally here in Trenton, uh, you know, New Jersey weed man, his case was not dismissed. The, the federal judge is allowing him to go ahead with the religious defense of his temple, the Liberty Bell Temple uh, 3, is it? Liberty Bell Temple 3, uh, over on, uh, right on this street here, right down the road. So they on, allow on the uh, 322 religious East State Street. Yeah, they're going to allow him to to uh, argue that. So, so that's a that's a really a major uh, major accomplishment you know, th in, in, um, in jurisprudence, American jurisprudence, to to allow uh, for the argument that uh, uh, a marijuana temple is uh, should not be harassed by uh, local police. Well, it's being harassed on well, not harassed exactly on two counts, but he's been uh, staying open like 
all night sometimes until 2 a.m. Yeah. 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 And it's a 10 o'clock closing for businesses. And yeah. it says Taco, it's, Taco Bell's it's, open, though. It's, it's not a no business. Wings He's saying it's not a business. No wings can be served after 11. Yeah. No what? No wings can be served after 11. That's what they told him. Oh, yeah. Unless you're Taco Bell. But he keeps getting these uh, summonses He's got in the all mail. Night they, I mean, he... he uh, he said that he got two more summonses today. At least that was the post I saw today on Facebook. Yep. He got half a dozen summonses the other day. So the, the Trenton police are still, they still believe he is not following the rules. Um, and, of course, he believes no. that he's being uh, harassed because he, he has a, uh, a religious temple that recognizes the sacramental and spiritual Do use of marijuana. Do you think this would have gone this direction if he hadn't stayed open past 10? Yes. You think so? Of course. Regardless, regardless, they were go- they were com- He opened. He was open for I love years. Air they didn't come to for death. For a he year. opened. He opened a marijuana temple across the street from City Hall. Why didn't they close it down? Next to the down? federal building. Don, why didn't they close it down then? Oh, we have the freedom to do whatever we want. No, no, but why didn't they close it down then? They closed it down right after he started disobeying them. Further, all my they, he got they got biz- I think it was just searching for reasons. Complaining, other people that they want to keep in the area were complaining. It forced them to act. Really Who we'll complained? The crackheads and the, the dope heads? Other, no. really? Who's complaining? Because who's out? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you who who is out on State Street. Out it around that matter. time. Doesn't matter. They can. We're talking no, legality. If I were a judge, I'd go irrelevant. Crackheads Move are citizens on, too. <laughs> <laughs> they have their right to smoke crack their crack okay. have their rights. Yeah, but listen to this. You know, when he was busted for a pound of marijuana uh, uh, at a traffic stop, he wanted to argue in front of the trial judge that he, he used it as a Rastafarian for religious purposes. He used the marijuana. That was his sacrament. And the, the trial judge would not allow him to, uh, to make that argument, to, to say anything about his religious use of marijuana during the trial. So the jury... He insisted on a jury trial. The jury wouldn't, could not hear it. They did not hear a single word about him being a couldn't, Rastafarian. Couldn't you come into Bob Marley music with Jamaican colors right. on, grow his dreads? I'm just saying and that that's so wrong. Not only that, but, but he appealed that to the uh, appellate court, the federal appellate court. And the appellate court uh, said that, uh, no, you know, they agreed with the trial judge. The trial judge was correct in not allowing uh, Ed Fortune to use... Uh, his, a religious defense of his use of marijuana because he was a Rastafarian. And then Ed appealed that to the New Jersey Supreme Court, and the New Jersey Supreme Court dismissed it. So they said, no, the, the appellate court was correct in, in, in forbidding, uh, the appellate court was correct when they said the trial court was uh, uh, correct in not allowing any discussion of, of uh, Mr. Fortune's religious use of marijuana. And now here, a federal court finally is allowing him to make these arguments. Huge. So this really is big. It really is big. It is. I mean, how can you say that your religious conviction is wrong? You know? Well, they they can't say it without... This is our country based on uh, religious freedom. Absolutely. Well, they got to give him a chance to state his case. They can't say, we're not even going to give you a chance to talk about why your religion should be allowed this benefit. You have to be able to listen and then say no if you want to, but you can't say, I'm not even going to listen to you. We're not going to allow that out. Uh-oh. Ed, we're there. Fortune on. is going to get paid We've someday. run out of time today. Yeah, he we may, give yeah. credit to our Ed sponsors, and Fortune including Fortune is going to sue Trenton. He's going to make lots of money. And you're going to pay for it, Ken. I'm happy to pay for it. Happy to pay for it. My thanks. <laughs> Magical butter. Da, 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 da. You know, I'm gonna hear this song in my head, I swear, up until da, da, tonight. Da, da, yeah, da, for at least three hours. I am. On your way home, you'll be singing it. At the touch of a button, enjoy great tasting healthy foods or make natural skincare products. Because magical butter makes your recipes better. Brownies, cookies, smoothies, sauces, soups, veggies, candies, and salad dressings, Jim. And much, much more. Magical butter. What do you need? Oh, you want to? Does she want to sign something? You have something for something? You 
you can go to our website, cmmnj.org, and you can sign up for monthly updates. Give us your email address on and, that. On that uh, and yeah. on, on, okay, and on Facebook, Join our mailing the, it's called the Friends of the Coalition for Medical Marijuana page. You know, just put the friends, if you type in Friends of Coalition for Medical Marijuana on Facebook, it'll go to it. It's not a closed group, but everybody has to be okayed by an administrator. You'll, you'll be, this is where you'll get a lot of really up-to-date information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Thank you for your support. It's what we do. Yep. Any time for, uh, uh, what's the name? What's that song you used to play at the end of, uh, uh, every podcast last year? I have some in my pocket. Magic go. Sorry, can I knock it over? I know you remember that song, right? If you don't love Jesus, go to hell. That one? Yeah. If you don't love ganja, go to hell. In a stainless steel bowl. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't go to hell in a stainless steel bowl. It, it's oh. the stainless steel insert in the magical butter. It's stainless steel. I love the magical butter machine. Thank you, Garen Angel, for giving Thank us you, machines Garen. to give away. We're getting some more to finish out the year. Are we really? Yeah, he's giving us six more machines. Ah, beach Garen. balls. Yo, how much is one of these to buy? A couple hundred. I want one. I'm gonna have to call in one day. <laughs> you no, know, you can't. You can't should, play. We should include. I, yeah, yeah, I can't. Yeah, he told me I can't play. When we give one away and somebody finds its benefits, we should make sure they know where to get in touch with Garen to tell him how it works. Oh, because that's easy. If the ones we're giving away, he's hearing from mothers and patients and what it means and what they can do with it, he'll give us more. You can call Garen Angel at 1-800-420-4334. That's 1-800-420-4334. Be dialing or be touching your smartphones. Be fondling your smartphone. Calling on a voice phone. Just say it. Magicalbutter.com. Get your machine today. This machine is great. How do you do that? What do you mean? Well, I mean, where would they buy? Where would they yeah. buy? Go to MagicalButter.com and you could buy your Magical Butter machine right there. Right online. Right online, man. Real easy. Dun, dun, dun. Well, dun. So it's time for the song, yeah? Yeah, because otherwise I'm going to hear it till tomorrow in my head. It's a very vexing tune. Larry Vargo's in the house. Yeah. Okay, I'll do the read. I like this. United States Senators Bob Menendez and Cory Booker host a forum on addiction and healing. Where? Featuring Vivex Murthy, United States Surgeon General, David Shulkin, Undersecretary for Health, and United States Department of Health Veterans Affairs. Wow, do we have to go to D.C.? I want to see that picture that was taken of me. It's right down the street from me in Livingston, New Jersey. St. Barnabas Medical Center. And what are they doing? It's a please join Senators Menendez and Booker. You have to register to go. They're, they're, wow, they're hosting the U.S. Surgeon General Vivek Murthy and David Shulkin for a panel discussion on the heroin and opiate addiction crisis in New Jersey. Really? August 8th, 1130 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at St. Barnabas in Livingston. What Brought day? to you by a partnership for a drug-free New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. What, what day of the week is this on? This is something I... Monday. I, okay, as long as it's not a Thursday. I'll be there. This okay. is down the street from me. I'll be there. A week from this Monday. So this Monday we got a vote in the Senate. Next Monday we got that. You get to talk to the U.S. Surgeon General. Nice. Well, you know, we at least get to make something known. I would, I would think you get a. Are they going to have open mic or take questions or do you hand uh, yeah. in questions? Yeah. How, how do they have a patent on cannabis? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you. If we have enough people there, somebody will definitely. Uh, yeah, I have questions. Get it out. Well, you know, and Cory Booker. It's possible. I mean, I'm going to wave at him. Somehow I'm recognizable. And we've had FaceTime in Washington together when he introduced the Carers Act. And uh, he really laughed a lot when I said, you are Batman. Uh, he understood the significance. And it was fun. What I'm saying is, Corey, question. Oh, yeah, a funny old dude in the beard. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> Well, Corey was very That'd be you, Ken, very me. supportive. <laughs> yeah, you know, he stopped here at one of our podcasts. Yes, he was. Yeah, he's good. Yo, he was. I just want to say, if 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 we'd had a Santa Claus, it would look like Jim. We had what? <laughs> 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 
We look like what? Weed if, if we, if, yeah, we the claws. We the claws. We the claws. It will, you will, it will look just like you, bro. Especially how you look right now. I can see you coming to my crib delivering <laughs> weed to me. Huh? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it, I'm not. it comes out on 420. <laughs> no Hulk. So William Haynes is not here today, but we do have a medical-freedom.com commercial for William Haney. We do. Is it medical-freedom or is it hyphen? No, it's medical-freedom. Medical-freedom. Yeah. D-A-S-H or the dash? The dash, dash. The same thing you would put in a phone number when you divide it apart, three digits, three digits, four, you know. That's okay. a dash. Dash. Yeah. Okay. So medical-freedom.com. Get your flags right here. Your flags here. Type of flag. And his book is coming out very soon. Joan Ford's book about the falling sickness. William's mother. Yeah. Very good book. Well, good. And uh, also Canaprint is another sponsor of ours. A new sponsor. Who's that? Canaprint is a company that has a device that measures each molecule in your cannabis plant so you have consistent medicine across the board for patients. Nice. Is this like a several thousand dollars or it's supposed it to be affordable for patients but we'll see uh, this, it's, a, it's a brand new device yeah. well basically if one patient you knew had one you could <sighs> use it I mean patients could share something just give me like one that. give me one we'll all have one yeah. <laughs> all good yeah. so yeah yeah it's good stuff so cmmnj.org that's the coalition for medical marijuana that's these two guys right here the reason why we can smoke cannabis in New Jersey is because of these two guys right here you would have been smoking anyway and Cheryl. We save you from looking over your shoulder, possibly. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's a lot. And a lot of other people. But we're taking credit for a lot of this because we were the first own, uh, medical marijuana-only group, the one that said we're only going to deal in medical marijuana. And, of course, they screwed that up when they made the law so restrictive. We realized that legalization was the only way all patients would get their medicine, so we also support legalization. But right now we can make progress with patients uh, and not make them wait for legalization, and we are. Well, I got this card to protect myself from the police, not for any other reason, but to protect myself from the people that are protecting it's, me. It's protected <laughs> you from the police like 50 times or more. Not because they stopped you. You walk in and say, ah, I'm going to smoke marijuana. I'm patient. I'm in pain. I need to use my medicine. Here's my credentials, my ID, my state-approved broken glass canister that you make <laughs> me carry this in. And uh, I'm going to go out and smoke my medicine. Where? Tell me where you want to arrest me. Not in Patterson. Yeah. yeah like I said, I personally do not care. You haven't been I, arrested yet doing that. I, 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 I live dangerously. I go get my I go, I go get my medicine from Tyrone. <laughs> <laughs> you don't qualify anyway. Do I do. I, I think I do qualify. Chronic stomach pains and you know, little manic depressive. If it's, if I think it's, I do. If it's okay, muscular skeletal yeah. spasticity, would qualify. And you live in Trenton, so you probably have. PTSD. You know, it'd be really cool yeah, if your that. doctor recommended it because he was your doctor, you were his patient, and he said, "I think it'll help." Doesn't matter what. Yo, you remember last year? I told you they they tried to tell me it was uh, marijuana was the cause of my stomach pain. I bought, you remember that gym? I bought the, yeah, the I thing in yeah. and I read some of it. it actually, it, the, the, I got that from, uh, I think, think St. Francis Hospital. That pamphlet saying marijuana was the cause of my stomach pains. When I had these stomach pains way before I even started smoking. So I, there goes that theory. Doctors should be able to say, well, let's, let's, uh, let me monitor this here. We'll you know, give, give you a recommendation. Thing. Should be up to a doctor. Sounds like a quack. Yeah, even a quack would know better. NewJerseyWeedMan.com, SativaCross.com, Legalize for Lorelei, DavidVersusAutism.org, JacksonStorms.com, Tuffy's Fight, Jenna's Journey, Jenny's Purple Ribbon Journey, Prayers for Sarah, Prayers for Pete, Team Alexis. I'm missing somebody. Missing a couple people, probably. I'm telling you, man, you do pretty good, but it could be time for a list. I'm missing one. Come we're on. Getting, we're getting too many people. Eventually, you'll need a list, not because you forget. The list grows. Come on, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Who am I missing? 
Well, you know, it's not on purpose. You'll think of it on the way home. Yeah, but it'll be too late. Oh, thanks, Larry. Gee, yeah. I didn't think of that. Gee, I never thought of having a list or an agenda. Well, I do have an agenda. I do Just have saying. Agenda, but it's in my head. The agenda's in my head. Just saying. <laughs> and it's a very passive-aggressive agenda. Just saying. You're, a, you're, you're, a, you're an aging man that smokes your marijuana. Agenda? No, no, my, what you, my agenda. No, your agenda. You we have similar agendas. You're very similar, yeah. FTP. Uh, WTF. <laughs> <laughs> STD. NBA. Uh, <laughs> NHL, MLB, ASAP. LMNOP. LMNOP me, no LMNOP you. He's stoners. Freaking yeah. stoners, man. Come on. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. I hate this part of the show because we always seem to have fun right before the end, and it's like we go from real happy to real sad real quick. You know it's coming. It's like, that's life. Man, no, you know, that's life. You know. Hey, well, we we uh, we ended. That's right. Donald hadn't been uh, to a podcast this year yet, and we may have done it before, uh, n- not on an actual regular basis. Yeah. But we end every show uh, with Lefty reciting the fourth yeah, stanza of the Ode to Remembrance, written for World War One uh, soldiers who died uh, on the battlefield. Why? Why do we do that? Well, we do that because there's a lot of patients who died on their battlefield. Like who? Well, like uh, the late, great Cheryl Miller, uh, my late wife. She was great. Yeah. She's and, wonderful, uh, man. Like, I wish I could have like met her. Like Sabina. Sabina Rose. A little, little 15-month-old Sabina, like little, her. Little baby who died waiting for cannabis because she had a 26-hour seizure. Yeah. Can you imagine having a 26-hour seizure and then dying from it? And then and your parents have to sit there and hold the baby in, their, in your arms while, while I just... I, yeah, and if and and if you if that parent was to go the illegal route to get something to make her child better and to have a life, she would be arrested. And Take who, her and, away. And who else? Your turn. Fucking amazing. The chat. Diane Ripatella. Diane Ripatella. Yeah, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. She came to Trenton. Her husband, uh, Joe, would bring her here, and. She was eloquent and scared. And when you saw her fear, not of testifying, her fear of the death she knew she would die, that her lungs would then just stop breathing. They would not work. And she was scared. And she'd come tell her how cannabis works for her. And um, there's video um, of her after the bill passed. There's a press conference. And somebody brought a boombox in and was playing, we are family. And she was like sitting dancing. It was the happiest I'd ever seen her. So uh, yeah, we, and there are so many that w- we say the re- Ode to Remembrance because we should always remember. Yeah, we like can't, I, if, if we forget the path, us. we forget where we're going. Very good. Yeah, that's I correct. Mean, so. Chad. Uh, yeah. Chad just died last month from brain cancer. Recently, yeah. He could not get the oil that he needed years ago. It was not available. It's still not available in New Jersey. If Chad was able to get that oil, that brain cancer could have been fought a lot sooner. And that tumor would have had the blood supply starved a lot he sooner. He would have had an actual chance. A chance. Of some degree. A fighting chance. Yeah. A well-defined chance. I mean, not, not like a one in a hundred. You know, I'm talking about if you got a one in a hundred chance of something like that of actual survival. Um, That's half of that would not. be from people using cannabis. And when Chad was diagnosed two years, years ago, two years before he died, his father killed himself. So Chad's mother was left to make this medicine for Chad and help him the best she can by herself. And she did the best she could. Amazing woman. We should remember people like her too, you know. I mean, it's people her, like that the oath is for. Her sacrifice is ongoing because she doesn't just walk away from this now. No, she Not lives with this gone. forever. Yeah. Oh man, I can't imagine. Might have been avoided with a plant. A weed, I plant, a weed. It could have been avoided. Yeah, they operated on Chad. 
before they gave him cannabis. Yeah, well, you got to try all alternatives first, including cutting your head open and digging into somebody's brain. And if that doesn't work, hey, what the hell? Give him some cannabis. Oops, too late. Yeah, too late. What the hell? Might as well give him cannabis now. We already cut half his brain out. It does upset us. I, I, but it's I, I can't. I don't got nothing to say. Helps us come here every Thursday. We have not missed a Thursday since early April last year. This is our 50th time in a row. And I remember uh, break. when I first met Lefty and he told me about these podcasts and I thought of coming to him. Uh, I woke up one Thursday and it, it was coming down. I mean, it was really raining out. Man, and I'm where like, were we? Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 and I, t- I text Lefty and I'm like, "Yo, it's raining. It's raining pretty bad. I guess we're not doing this." Uh-huh. And what? Yeah, he, he texts says, me back like, "What? I ain't says, never scared." What are you talking about? Well, it's a matter I'll, of actually. I'm thinking like all the electrical equipment, water, and electricity it, 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 don't yeah, go together, but Lefty's it's, never. Scared. We don't ever have a discussion. Do you want to do this or not? Look at the weather. The discussion is always, can we protect your equipment? Yeah. Can, That's it. Can we stop early? We don't care about ourselves, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I get Medicaid. I could get fixed quicker than we can get your equipment fixed if we need to. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, and we haven't missed. And uh, today was actually supposed to be some pretty bad thunderstorms. They're probably going by a little below us. Yeah. But uh, I didn't have to talk to you to see what you wanted to do. Show up as we can. Sometimes we start late. Sometimes we have equipment failures. Like Sometimes today. none of our cameras Sometimes. work when we need them. And that was all today. <laughs> was all of that today. All of it. Sometimes. You know, but, you know, I'm after professionalism, and that has nothing to do with our growing professionalism. It really yeah. doesn't. Happy 50th, Jim. Yeah, yeah happy I, 50th I, to you. And by the Thank way, you. I talked to a professional named, named Bob Salter. Bob Salter's on the radio on WFAN Sunday morning, 6 to yeah. 8. Yeah, Bob. He has a great show. And I asked him, I said, Bob, when you, uh, you know, who's on your show this week? I said, it was Sunday night. I said, who's on your show tomorrow, Bob? He says, I don't know. I said, really? You're just like us. You have no clue. You just go in, <laughs> whatever. I'm like, yeah. I'm yeah. like, cool. I'm like, we're pros then. Yeah, okay. Me and Jim are pros. Yeah. We're just like you. Teach us. Teach us. <laughs> Teach us how to do that. Bob, how to mail it in. <laughs> make us your student. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's the best. Yeah. Well, you know, we so, have gotten better. And truth yeah. be told, yeah, at the yeah. be- beginning of this season, I – stated my uh, potential unwillingness to go any further because I did not re- want to repeat the year before. It was fun. We learned some, but we were not a legitimate podcast, I don't think. We were having fun. We were trying to present information, but the wheels would fall off. And sometimes there would be, I don't even want to say. There was good stuff last year. You no, know, there was a lot of good stuff, but in a three-hour podcast, it took most of the year to get to where more than half was viable to show somebody, and where half I really <laughs> wouldn't want somebody to see, you know. And uh, this year, I would say we've had a couple of podcasts where there isn't anybody I wouldn't say, watch it. It's, it's, it I'll tell them where to watch something, but my worry was always, yeah, look at the 335 <laughs> mark to the 345 mark. Only and, that. That's and, it. Yeah, and yeah, they'd go, go let me see what's at the one hour and 20 minute mark. And it's, <laughs> you know, oh, and it's, I wouldn't want them to see that. We have several podcasts this year that, you know, I would let any uh, reporter look at if they wanted to have an opinion of what we do. So uh, I'm real happy with where we're going. And today with the governor. Smiling at us after walking through the sign that said one lane of uh, <laughs> foot traffic study, we think, with a picture of me, him. Yeah, he definitely saw it this time. And uh, Bill Baroni, the guy who called it a traffic study in the first place. So I think it's the first time he had to walk by and see that picture. And I'm telling you, he will sign the bill. This, th- this is going to happen, and it's going to happen quick. And today marked the return of one of your most Let's, popular uh, guests. Listen, I got it. We got to have a pool, and people can guess what day he signs it. Closest <laughs> to the date, wins half, That's we great. get half. Okay, oh awesome. And I'm sure it's legal. 
That is awesome. Jim usually has good ideas. Guess what I just did, Jim? I, I called the number, like you said. You yeah. said there should be patients that call Garen and tell them how good of a job they're doing. Yeah. So I called, and I was like, hey, I won your magic butter machine on the Sativa Cross good podcast. Oh. And they said they're sending me a shirt and some stickers <laughs> and stuff. I literally just called. You know. And that's... they were like. They should know. Yeah, I literally just called. Garen I talked to him for five great. minutes, and Garen I was like, your how do I win machine one has really Did you helped make those me. brownies and, in that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I used the butter for those brownies. I was in pain that day. My brownies. foot hurt mighty bad, I, I gotta tell you. Yummy. So I had one of them brownies. I don't eat brown <laughs> chocolate, so I need yeah. I need my own well, butter machine. I can machine. make them with strawberry right. shortcake, oh, um, brownies, good. cookies, um, peanut that butter cookies, good. chocolate well, chip yo, cookies. You should just taste the one on yeah. Weed Man's birthday. Chocolate cookies. Oh, yeah, you were there. Oh, my God, yeah, I was there. Oh, yeah, you're like, you should have been there. Can you make Rice Krispie Treats? Yep, yeah. You could get the material to mix in with yeah. the Rice Krispies, well, uh, whatever it is. You got to spike yeah. it. Yeah, I've had them. Like, They're awesome. You just use marshmallow. Yeah, I can and make cookies. Yeah, I can figure marshmallow something out. Marshmallow treats. Oatmeal cookies. Don't eat three. That, that is too much. Or sugar cookies. Rice Krispies okay. Treats, okay, so. we got to end the show. We're starting to rain. Get serious. Get serious. No, it's is starting it to rain. We got to go. Is it time to play the song? Joan Ford. Sabina Rose. Marie and Gracie, Cindy May. See you on Monday. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We, we will remember, remember them. them. 